Back at the Kingdom in Seattle, Washington, a crowd of around 60,000 expected here today. They can handle a crowd of 65,000. Bill Wilkerson's alongside. Bill, a uh, quick uh, impromptu uh, version of what do you think of the Kingdom? Very impressive, Dan, no question about it. Uh, the other impressive thing is the cost. At $67 million, that might sound like a lot of money, but I'm told this is the least expensive of all the dome stadiums in the country. This stadium has it all. They have the instant replay board. Everything is very visible. Great lines of sight for the fans. And, of course, they have the AstroTurf field as if they need it because it's under the dome, as you mentioned before. But the King Dome is a very well-constructed, very cleverly constructed structure, and it didn't cost a bundle to build. And I think the people of Seattle really got a bargain in building the uh, King Dome here in Seattle. And, of course, we wish the Seahawks a long, successful tenure in the National Football League after today's opening game against the Cardinals. I'm Dan Kelly. Bill Wilkerson's alongside. The officials are gathered right around the 50-yard line just below us. The referee today will be Tom Bell. Bill Wilkerson, how about some other pregame information? Well, Jack Patera, coming in as the first coach of the Seattle Seahawks, has a couple of very tough jobs on his hand. Number one, he's still adjusting the roster. He's been allowed to keep more than the 43-man limit. He has 49 right now. That's because the two expansion franchises, Tampa Bay and Seattle, of course are going to have problems trying to find a starting 22, 11 on offense and 11 on defense, and they're still searching. As a matter of fact, Jack Patera picked up quite a few people this week because he has some problems at running back. Andy Bolton and Bill Owens will start, and they play, may play the full game because rookie Sherman Smith is on crutches. He has a fracture to the right leg. They picked up Hugh McInnes, Ralph Nelson, Don Testerman, Oliver Ross, and defensive end Jim White. They also picked up Bill Munson as a backup quarterback in a trade with Detroit, but he's not dressed this evening. So it appears that lefty Jim Zorn will be the man for the Seahawks, and he not only can throw the ball well, but he can run well in addition to that. The other problem that Jack Lutera has is that he's playing St. Louis today. He has the Redskins next week, and in the fourth week of his season, he has Dallas. So he has uh, something to say as far as his Eastern Division is concerned, but realistically, when you're playing St. Louis, Washington, and Dallas, you have problems on your hands. We'll be back and hear from Bill Wilkerson with the starting lineups and have the national anthem as the teams are being introduced. We'll be back for the opening kickoff in just a minute. Filler and Vera for Jack in the Box Restaurant. Nice party, isn't it? Adequate. You've got a lot of artists here. Are you an artist? Actually, I'm a neo pseudo impressionist. My sister had that. What? Uh, what do you do? I'm with Jack in the Box. Oh, I thought you were alone. No, Jack in the Box is where I work. You're in toys. <laughs> no, hamburgers, onion rings, tacos, that sort of thing. Oh, you mean Jack in the Box restaurant? You mean you heard of it? Oh, who hasn't? As an artist, I've admired its very special ambience. The fact that you actually order from a clown. How fayacho. Fayacho. He worked for us for about two weeks. true functionalism with those adorable storybook nuances, which actually And that's what makes Jack in the Box such a neat place to eat. Yes. Say, now that I've got you here, tell me, there's something I've always wanted to know. Yeah? What is it? How do you make the clown talk? (laughs) Sorry, but like the sauce we put on some of our hamburgers, that's a secret. Secret sauce? How mysterious. By the way, what's your phone number? It's the same as your sauce. Bill Wilkerson, the Cardinals have been introduced. Terry Metcalf back in his home stand, got a hometown, got a great ovation. Now the Seahawks being introduced. Why did you bring us up to date on the starting lineup? They're introducing the Seattle Seahawks offensive unit. The coin toss has not been held, but we'll give you the Seahawks offense nonetheless. The wide receiver, the veteran from Minnesota, acquired in the veteran allocation, Sam McCullum. The left tackle, number 63, Nick Bebout. At left guard, number 67, Bob Pynchon. At center, number 53, Fred Hoagland. At right guard, number 65, John Damari. The right tackle, number 73, Norm Evans. At tight end, number 87, Ron Howard. The other wide receiver, number 88, Don Clune. The quarterback, number 10, the lefty Jim Zorn. At running back, number 33, Andrew Bolton. And number 39, Bill O. The Cardinal offensive unit also introduced only one change from the standard unit. J.B. Kane is replacing Jackie Smith at tight end because Jackie got his foot stepped on in the last preseason game against the Kansas City Chiefs. He could play, but instead J.B. Kane will start. So the Cardinal offense has number 85, Mel Gray at wide receiver, along with 84, Ike Harris. The tackles, number 60, Roger Finney on the left side. Number 72, all pro Dan Jared off on the right side. 
The guard's number 64, Bob Young, on the left side. And the right side, guard number 66, Conrad Dobler. The center, number 54, Tom Banks. And the backfield. At quarterback, number 17, Jim Hart. The running backs, Terry Metcalf and Jim Odie. I mentioned that Terry Metcalf returns to Seattle. He uh, originally comes from Seattle, attended Franklin High School and Everett Community College before continuing his career at Long Beach State. And Cardinal head coach John Coriel is a Seattle native. While we're talking about things such as that, sorry to see that Joe Sullivan, Cardinal Director of Operations, is not on the trip with us. Joe is hospitalized back in St. Louis undergoing some tests. Uh, good to hear, Joe, that everything's going well. Sorry you can't be here to see this opening game from uh, the Kingdom in Seattle, Washington. Co-captains are out at center field for the coin toss, and in a moment we'll know who's going to be kicking off and who's going to be receiving in this football game. The referee, as I mentioned today, is Tommy Bell. The other officials, the umpire is Gordon Wells, the head linesman Ray Dodez, the line judge Gary Markbright, the back judge Tom Kelleher, and the field judge Ed Merrifield. The Cardinals will receive, so the offensive unit, as I mentioned, will go onto the field. The Seahawks defense has number 75, Dave Tipton, at left end. The right end, number 77, Richard Harris. The left tackle, number 71, the number one draft choice from Notre Dame, Steve Niehaus. And the right tackle, number 74, Carl Barsett. And left linebacker, number 36, Ken Geddes. The middle linebacker, Ed Bradley, number 38. The right linebacker, number 32, Mike Curtis. <laughs> Cardinals will be receiving, and let's, before we do anything else, congratulate Al Onofrio and the Missouri Tigers for a tremendous upset victory last night out in Los Angeles over Southern Cal. What a way to launch a college football season for the Tigers. Going back is Jerry Lawton as the deep man for the Cardinals, along with Wayne Morris as the Seahawks get ready to kick off, and it will be Don Fitterlich, uh, number three draft choice of the Seahawks out of Temple University who does their field goal kicking duties as the referee Tommy Bell gets set to start this football game. The first National Football League game, regular season game ever, played here in Seattle and at the New Kingdom. The Kingdom, by the way, had its official opening March 27th of this year. And this is the first regular season NFL game ever played here in Seattle. So Don Vitterlich getting ready to kick off. Jerry Latin and Wayne Morris are the deep men for the Cardinals. Standing back at the goal line. We're at the Kingdom in Seattle, Washington. With 60 to 65,000 Seattle area football fans. Here comes the rookie Vitterlich. And we're underway with the first football game ever in Seattle in regular season play. Morris at the 5. 20, 25. Wayne Morris to the 30. Fumble. Loose ball. Cardinals have a shot at it. Picked up by Latin, and Latin continues on out to the 48 yard line. They advance the football about 10 extra yards, but in a rather dangerous way as Morris fumbled it. Latin was able to pick it up and get another 10 yards. That's the one thing you worry about from an expansion team. You don't want to give them a shot like this this, this early in the ball game, and the Cardinals almost did it. So the Cardinals, first and 10 at their own 43 yard line. Mel Gray, a wide receiver to the left. Ike Harris is a slot man to the left side. Metcalf and Otis are running back behind Jim Hart. And on the first play, the handoff goes to Otis up the middle. Big hole, Otis across midfield. And into the Seahawks 46-yard line. And Otis on the first play appears to have a first down. The free safety, Dave Brown, coming over to make the stop after an 11-yard pickup by Jim Otis. This broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the St. Louis Cardinals. Solely for the entertainment of our audience, any publication, reproduction, or other use of the description or accounts of this game without the written consent of the Cardinals and KMOX radio is prohibited. First and ten, St. Louis at the Seahawks 46. Here's Otis again on a sweep to the right side, and they have him nailed back to the line of scrimmage for a little bit of a loss in the play, and it was the left side linebacker, Ken Geddes, who came over and got Otis, and there'll be a loss in the play. 
Ken Geddes, one of the many veterans uh, used by Jack Patera, acquired in the veteran allocation from Los Angeles. They have a pretty much veteran unit on defense as Jack Patera, a defensive whiz at Minnesota, is concentrating on putting together defense first before thinking about offense. Now the Cardinals have Steve Jones in the backfield. He comes in to replace Otis. A loss of a yard on that play. It's second at 11, St. Louis. At the 47-yard line of the Seahawks. Gray to the left. Harris to the right. Here is Metcalf on a handoff from Hart. Picks his way up the middle. Inside the 40. Gets the block and gets down to the 37-yard line. Does Terry Metcalf and Dave Tipton. The left defensive end made the stop and the hit on Terry Metcalf. As Metcalf started out wide as if to go on a sweep and cut back up into the flow up the middle and runs the ball down to the 36-yard line. And it's close to a first down. They bring in a new football. They're not going to bring in the yard six. They're about a yard short. So it's going to be third and one for St. Louis at the 36-yard line of the Seahawks. Out of the ball game comes Ike Harris as they bring in Henry Allison. Henry Allison as a man playing as the tight end on this play. And that's a new position for Mr. Allison. Jackie Smith, of course, is banged up and in uniform, but not expected probably to play in the ball game today. Henry Allison, of course, is normally an offensive guard and tackle, but they've been working him at tight end, and a good thing, too. And now the Cardinals are being penalized five yards for, let's get the signal, illegal procedure. And the foul is against Henry Allison, wearing number 68, 68 coming out and lining up as a tight end and not reporting it to the official. So that's what the procedure penalty is. Well, his first chance at tight end, and he blew it. Back to the offensive line. And now it's third and six Cardinals at the 41-yard line of the Seahawks. Ray to the left. Ike Harris is to the right. J.B. Kane, the tight end to the left side. Here is Hart on third and six. Back to throw. Hart has time throws to Jones. Off his hands. And incomplete. Kingdom has their first chance to fool the officials in the National Football League. Well, the Cardinals on this first series uh, didn't have everything running smoothly as far as the offense is concerned. So now, Terry George is standing at about his 43-yard line to put the first putt into the air here in the Kingdom. Dave Brown and Lyle Blackwood are the deep end for Seattle, standing at the Seahawks 10-yard line. Jerry Joyce, the Cardinal rookie putter, in to do the putting. Joyce having an outstanding preseason, a six foot six, 230-pound rookie from Missouri Southern State. He fans at his own 43-yard line to do the putting on this fourth and sixth situation. Rahini in, gets the pass to Joyce from center. Joyce trying to angle the ball out of bounds, punts it down to the 11-yard line, taken by Blackwood. Blackwood cuts up the middle, gets to about the 12, and then is snowed under by white jersey St. Louis Cardinal players. One of the first people downfield to make the hit was, as you might expect, Ray White. Also down on the punt coverage was Al Beauchamp. And Clarence Jason Dern in on the tackle as well. So the Seahawks take over first and 10 and send in their offensive unit led by quarterback Jim Zorn, who had a brief shot for the Dallas Cowboys last preseason. And Zorn comes in to run the offense with the running backs Andrew Bolton and Bill O. First and 10 Seattle at their own 12-yard line as the Seahawks get ready to run their first play from offense in the National Football League. And Zorn hands off to the running back Andrew Bolton on a sweep to the right side. Bolton turns the corner and gets a yard or two before being stopped by Larry Stallings, the left side linebacker. Upshaw in on the stop as well for the Cardinals as he got it to the 13-yard line. So the gain is minimal on the first play from scrimmage for the Seahawks. We're early in the first quarter at the King Dome in Seattle. The Seahawks nothing and the Cardinals nothing. The wide receiver comes out to the right side, and that is Ron Howard. Steve Rabel, the wide receiver to the left side. Zorn, the quarterback, and on second down, goes up the middle with his big running back, Bill Olds. And Olds cracks off tackle out to about the 15-yard line. 
Stopped there by Marvin Upshaw and Charlie Davis. Cardinals now send in Jeff Severson and Clarence Duran. Reeves comes out of there. Someone else will come out. And it's middle linebacker Greg Hartle as on a passing situation. Third and seven, the Cardinals send in some extra defensive help in the secondary. Third and seven, Seattle at their own 15-yard line. Jim Zorn, the quarterback, working on a long count, and Zorn drops the pass from center, has to fall on the ball, back of the eight-yard line, and does recover it. As the Cardinals came close to recovering the loose football of Zorn, on the pass from the center, Fred Hoagland had trouble handling it, and the Seahawks will be forced to punt from their end zone. Pat Tilly is the only man going back for the St. Louis Cardinals, the rookie wide receiver out of Louisiana Tech. And Rick Engels will do the putting. Engels, uh, third-round draft choice of Seattle, was second in the nation in putting in college last year with a 46.6-yard average out of Tulsa University. And Rick Engels stands in the Seahawks end zone to punt to Pat Tilly. 10.37 left in the opening period. It's St. Louis nothing and Seattle nothing. And let's see how Rick Engels does with his first punt ever in the National Football League. Engels gets it away, and it's a dandy. Drives Tilly back over midfield, takes it in his own 46 across midfield into the 45, into the 40, and down to the 37-yard line goes Pat Tilly. Alvis Garvey on the Seahawks specialty unit comes down to make the stop after a fine return by Tilly. There's an official timeout, and the score, the Seahawks nothing, the Cardinals nothing. Well, after a fine 17-yard punt return by Pat Kelly, the Cardinals have excellent field position. They're at the Seattle 37-yard line as the offense comes in, and quarterback Jim Hart sends Mel Gray wide to the right side. Mike Harris is a slot man to the right side. J.V. Kane, the tight end left. Otis and Metcalf with the setbacks in behind Hart. Here's the handoff to Metcalf. Al tackle and a power play. Drives down to the 31-yard line to Terry Metcalf. And Carol Barisic and Dave Brown coming up from free safety make the stop after they run by Metcalf of about seven yards. Setting the Seahawks secondary, they have Dave Brown, Al Matthews, Raleigh Wolsey, and Eddie McMillan. They have some experience back there, but they haven't been together that long, obviously, so they may have some problems. Cardinals second and three at the Seahawks 31-yard line. As hard as both the wide receivers' right hands off to Otis on a counter play. Otis barges his way inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line and probably is short of the first down. Middle linebacker Ed Bradley makes the stop. Bill mentions the Seahawks secondary. The linebackers, Ed Bradley in the middle. Mike Curtis, the former Baltimore Colts, is the right side linebacker. Ken Geddes on the left side. Up front, the left defensive end is Dave Tipton. Steve Niehaus out of Notre Dame, the left tackle, the Seahawks' number one draft choice. Carol Barisic is the right tackle, and Richard Harris, a uh, late addition after being cut by the Bears, is the right defensive end. Third and one for the Cardinals at the Seahawks' 28-yard line. Gray, the only wide receiver. The handoff to Otis. Otis off tackle. Breaks the tackle inside the 20. Has the first down, and Otis came close to breaking that one all the way. Caught from behind by Richard Harris. And Otis picks up a first down for the Cardinals. How many times have we seen that happen on short yardage? The defense stacks in there. That time, Otis went on an off-tackle slant and saw that he had daylight to the outside, so he went romping down the left sideline. He stopped and thought about cutting back inside, and that's when he turned right into Richard Harris. I think he might have scored had he stayed on the sideline. First and 10, St. Louis at the Seahawks' 16-yard line. Gray to the right, Harris is the slot man right. Kane, the tight end left. Here's Hart on the first down play, the pitch to Otis on a sweep. Otis hit at the 15, bounces off the tackle, fights his way down to the 12-yard line. Stopped there by the middle linebacker, Ed Bradley, and by Dave Tipton, the defensive end. So the pickup on the play was about five yards for Otis, and it's going to be second and five, St. Louis. Down at the Seattle 11-yard line. Seahawks in preseason play were one and five. Otis has carried the ball five times for 29 yards so far. Now the Cardinals with Gray as the wide receiver left. Harris in the slot to the left side. Second and five, St. Louis. Handoff going to Metcalf. Hurdles a man and is thrown down at the 12-yard line. 
D.P. House, the number one draft choice from Notre Dame, and Ed Bradley, the middle linebacker, stopping Metcalf, and Metcalf perhaps gets a yard and no more. Into the ball game comes Steve Jones to replace Jim Otis. So it's going to be third, and still about five yards to go, so there's no gain on the play by Metcalf. The ball just at the Seattle 11-yard line. The Cardinals threatening here. 7.24 left in the opening quarter. Scoreless football game. Hart with Gray and Harris to the right side. Works from an eye formation. Here's Hart on third and five. Back to throw. Swings it out to Metcalf. Complete at the 15. Metcalf gang tackled at the 12-yard line, and there's no gain in the play. Dave Brown, the free safety, came over and was the first one there, but got help from the outside from Roley Woolsey. And there's no gain on the play as the Cardinals have the ball still at the 11-yard line. Well, of course, the Cardinal offense is no stranger to Jack Patera. He had to defense this offense when he was at Minnesota. It's just a question of having the personnel to stop St. Louis that he had at Minnesota, but if there is a way to work a defense together, Jack Patera will find it. So the Cardinals will go the field goal route. Roger Worley in the hole for Jim Bakken. They'll put it down at the 18-yard line, so it will be a 28-yard attempt by Bakken to give the Cardinals the lead here in Seattle. Worley puts it down. Bakken puts it up. It is good. Bakken, a 28-yard field goal, and the Cardinals have scored the first points ever in a regular season National Football League here at the King Dome in Seattle. There's an official timeout on the score. The St. Louis Cardinals three, the Seattle Seahawks nothing. And Heiser Bush, St. Louis. Eight-yard field goal by Cardinal veteran field goal kicker Jim Bakken starts the season off. Bakken in his 15th season, and the Cardinals off to a three-to-nothing lead as Bakken now gets ready to kick off with the deep end for Seattle. Andy Bolton, Steve Largent, and Lyle Blackwood all standing back inside the Seahawks 10-yard line. We have 6:22 remaining here in the opening quarter. Cardinals leading it three to nothing, and here comes Bakken with the Cardinals kickoff. Booms it high and long, taken by Bolton at the six to the 10, 15, 20. Bolton to the 25 and tripped up there on a good low tackle by Lee Nelson, the rookie cornerback on the Cardinal kickoff team who came down and cut the feet from underneath. Andy Bolton and the Seahawks take over first and 10 with the ball at their own 25 yard line. Twenty-four yard return by Bolton on that play. First and ten for the Seahawks at their own twenty-five yard line as the quarterback Jim Zorn drops back to throw. He's a left-handed passer. Screens it out to the right side, and the intended receiver was Andrew Bolton. He had his back turned to the play, and the pass was overthrown anyway. And it goes as an incomplete forward pass as they try the screen to the right side. The Seahawks, by the way, for those of you interested in such things, are attired in blue jerseys and have green and uh, silver in their uniform as well. Silver pants, silver helmets, a little bit of green trim. Second and 10 for the Seahawks at their own 25-yard line as Jim Zorn works on a long count. The Seahawks trail in the football game three to nothing. Here's a tackle play to Bill Hole for the running back who cracks outside the 30-yard line to the 31-yard line. Greg Hartle, the middle linebacker, in on the stop for the Cardinals. And the pickup on the play was about six. Some final scores in Cleveland 38, the Jets 17, Baltimore over New England 27-13, Cincinnati 17, Denver 7. In the fourth quarter, Washington 19, the Giants 17 at the half, Minnesota 33, New Orleans 3. In the third quarter, San Francisco 19, Green Bay 7. And the ball carrier on that last play, Bill Olds, is injured and is being assisted from the field. Well, the Seahawks certainly can't afford any more injuries. There's an official timeout in the score. The Cardinals three, the Seahawks nothing. With Bill Wilkerson, Dan Kelly back at the Kingdom in Seattle, and the Seahawks, after a seven-yard gain, have a new running back in the ball game, Hugh McKinnis. Uh, Newcomer just recently to the Seahawks coming to Seattle from the Cleveland Browns on waivers. So it's third and four, or third and, yeah, about four for the Seahawks at their own 31 yard line. And the quarterback Zorn hands off. Back open, the big hole goes across the 40 to the 42 yard line. And Andrew 
Booth and picks up a first down before he's brought down by Mike Sensabaugh. But a Seahawks first down, and Bill, why not set up that Cardinal defense? Yankowski and Zook are the ends. Davis and Upshaw are the tackles. The linebackers, Hargill, Arneson, and Stallings. In the secondary, Thompson, Worley, Reeves, and Sensabaugh. Now Sam McCollum comes out to the left as a wide receiver. Steve Largent is wide to the right. Jim Zorn, the quarterback, with Bolton and McKinnis as the running backs on the first down play. And Zorn, the left-handed passer, back to throw, completes to McCollum across midfield and pushed out of bounds by Worley at the 48-yard line. And a gain of about nine on the play. Let's pause 15 seconds for station identification. This is the Cardinals Football Network. M.B. Thomas, direct factory dealers for Winnebago, Eldorado, and Playmore. Midwest's oldest and largest RV dealer. M.B. Thomas, RV sales. 275 Lee Mayferry Road, St. Louis, Missouri. KMOX FM in St. Louis. Second and one for the Seahawks at the Cardinal 49-yard line as Dorn works out of an eye formation. Faking, going to throw on the... tackle along with strong safety Ken Ray. Steve Largent hauls in the pass and picks up a first down for the Seahawks down to the Cardinal 30-yard line. Steve Largent, 5'11", 184-pound rookie out of Tulsa. Now the Seahawks first and 10 at the Cardinal 35-yard line. Here is Zorn. Giving to the first man through, who is Hugh McKinnis. McKinnis gets down to about the 33-yard line and is stopped there by Ron Yankowski. Number 78 just getting to his feet after making the stop, and the pickup on the play was about two yards for McKinnis. McKinnis has only been in camp a few days, Bill. Seahawks have been adding people quite consistently as teams got down, and you just wonder how much offense these running backs particularly would know. Not very much, especially the timing should be off, but so far Zorn and the backs have had good success in moving the football. Steve Rabel wide to the right side at second and eight. Zorn back to throw, throwing down the middle, and it is complete. Largent at the 19-yard line. And Largent was tackled immediately by Roger Worley and Mike Sensabaugh, but not before Steve Largent has picked up another first down. And this brings the crowd here in Seattle to a roaring pitch as it's first and 10 Seattle at the Cardinal 17-yard line. The defensive pressure on uh, Jim Zorn has not been there. The Cardinals are going to have to put more pressure on him or he's going to pick them apart. Largent was acquired from Houston in a trade for a future draft choice and was drafted in the fourth round by the Oilers in the 76th draft, first and 10. As the handoff goes to the running back, Andrew Bolton over the right guard, drives its way down to the Greg Hartle, the middle linebacker, making the stop. And the Seahawks are moving the ball well. And the Cardinal defensive tackle, Charlie Davis and Marvin Upshaw, are being blown out of there by Nick Bebout, Bob Pinchon, Fred Hoagland, and John Damari. They're going to have to play a lot more inspired football because the Seahawks are blowing them right down the field right now. And I know they can play better than this. They have to play better than this. They haven't played any defense yet along the front wall. The pickup by Bolton was seven. It's second and three for Seattle at the Cardinals' 10-yard line. Cardinals leading three to nothing. Here's Zorn. Hands off to Bolton again. He stopped at the eight this time as he was tripped up from behind by Marvin Upshaw. And Bolton gets it down to the eight-yard line, a gain of two, and it's going to be third and one for Seattle at the Cardinals' eight-yard line. Cardinals leading three to nothing. We have 206 left here in the first quarter. We're at the King Dome in Seattle, Washington. First National Football League regular season game ever played here. Split backfield for Zorn and the Seahawks on third and one. Works on the long count. Handoff going to the second man through who is McKinnis and McKinnis is stopped short right at the 10 yard line. Greg Hartle, a middle linebacker, reacting well, drifting over and making the stop. And there's a loss of about two on the play back to the 10-yard line. So the Cardinals come up with a key defensive play. And it's going to be fourth and three now. As Don Bitterlich 
And the field goal unit comes in. Bitterlick, a number three draft choice out of Temple University. Set some NCAA college records last year. At 21 field goals. The quarterback Jim Zorn will hold as Bitterlick will try a field goal from the 17-yard line. Here's the 27-yard attempt. Seahawks have their first points ever in the National Football League on a 27-yard field goal by Don Bitterlick. By that time, the Seahawks' veteran offensive unit completely dominated the Cardinals' front four. They only stopped the Seahawks down inside their 10 on a great play by Mark Arneson as he shot through on the right side and kept the running back from getting the first down. That Seahawks front offensive line features Nick Bebout, Bob Pension, Fred Hoagland, John Damari, Norm Evans, and Ron Howard. All of these members of the Seahawks offensive front unit were acquired through the veteran allocation, so there are no strangers to blocking along that front wall, and that time they blocked extremely well. The tackles, Upshaw and Davis, did not do the job on that series. They'll have to be a lot more aggressive because if they don't, then Jim Zorn is going to start sprinting out with that ball, and Zorn is an excellent runner as well as an excellent passer, so I'm sure that... Willie Zappalak is going to talk to his crew, and he's doing that right now to find out what's going on over there. An 11-play, 75-yard drive, and the Seahawks on the 27-yard field goal by Bitterlick have tied the game 3-3, and Bitterlick gets ready to kick off. Jerry Latin and Wayne Morris are deep for the Cardinals. Here's Bitterlick high, end over end kickoff. Latin at the 4. He's to the 10, 15, 20, right up the middle and tripped up at the 23-yard line. Balls up to about the 25, and that's where the Cardinals will put the ball into play. Don Dufek downfield pass to make the stop, along with Jim White, a defensive end. And the Cardinals have the ball at their own 25-yard line. A 21-yard return by Jerry Lutton. Quarterback Jim Zorn in passing has hit on three of five attempts for 32 yards. It's a 3-3 football game. Cardinals first and 10. At their own 25. Hart with Ike Harris to the left, Mel Gray to the right. As Metcalf and Otis is a setback, Kane the tight end and Hart is back to throw. Sideline tighter completes to Harris at the 32 yard line, and he is tackled at the 33 yard line. Roley Woolsey, the first man to make contact, the right cornerback. Mike Curtis drifting back from his linebacker spot to help out, and they pick up with seven on the pass completion to Ike Harris. And it's going to be second and three for the Cardinals at their own 33-yard line. Roley Woolsey is the right cornerback. The left corner is Eddie McMillan. He's covering Gray. Woolsey is on Ike Harris. Third or second and three. Cardinals at their own 32. Hart working on the long count. Jim Hart back to throw. Screen pass to Metcalf. Gets a block at the 35 up to the 38-yard line. And Metcalf picks up a first down before being stopped by Steve Niehaus. The rookie defensive tackle and the Seahawks' number one draft choice from Notre Dame. That time, Conrad Dobler on the screen play almost buried Al Matthews in the bottom of his kingdom. He put a tremendous block on Matthews. That enabled Metcalf to cut back inside and get the first down. And that is the final play of the first quarter out here in Seattle. And the fans have loved it thus far. The Seahawks have battled on even terms with the twice Eastern Division National Football League Division Champion Cardinals. That's the end of the first quarter and the score. The Cardinals three and the Seahawks three. With Bill Wilkerson, Dan Kelly back at the Kingdom in Seattle. The Cardinals three, the Seahawks three, and the Cardinals have a first down at their own 39-yard line as quarterback Jim Hart comes back in to run the offense. Hart, 6'1", a 210-pounder, now 32 years of age in his 11th season out of Southern Illinois, where he used to be a teammate of Bill Wilkerson, although he never brags about it. I never brag about it because I made Jim the scrambler he is today, playing offensive tackle. Hart, by the way, has passed for 2,000 yards in each of his last three seasons. Has had an outstanding preseason this year. First and 10 Cardinals at their own 39-yard line. Gray to the right, Ike Harris is to the left. Here's Hart on a drop play to Metcalf, big hole, Metcalf across midfield, breaks inside the Seahawks 40, down inside the 30, dodges his way down to the 25-yard line. Before being stopped by Mike Curtis, who chased the fleet cardinal halfback, Terry Metcalf, all the way to the 25-yard line. 
That's what happens when Jim Hart is clicking with the passes as he has been in this series. The defensive linemen come flying in there. The linebackers drop into their zone, and suddenly up pops Metcalf, and when he gets into that secondary, you've got trouble, and that's what the Seahawks had that time. A 36-yard romp by Jerry Metcalf with a cardinal first down at the Seattle 25. Gray to the left, Ike Harris to the right. Tight end is J.B. Kane to the left side. The backs are strong right behind Hart. And off to this big hole inside the 20 down to the 15 to the 13-yard line. Goes Ohio State's Jim Otis. And he was stopped in the play by Al Matthews, the strong safety, as Otis had a head of steam going and barged down to the 13-yard line. And another Cardinal first down, and the Cardinal player is down on the field and injured. It looks like Terry Metcalf, as the Cardinal training staff goes out to the field, Terry bending over on his knees. It's kind of hard to tell whether he was hit trying to block. Now he's up on his knees now, and apparently he got dinged pretty badly as they take his helmet off. On that play, they went right off the right side. It looked like a trap block between the center, Tom Banks, and the right guard, Conrad Dobler, because it appears as though Banks stepped behind Dobler to kick out the tackle on that side. Jim Hart wheeled around, headed inside to Otis. He had plenty of running room, and when Otis gets moving, the milkshake can really rack up those yards. Now Terry Metcalf comes to the sideline. He's running to the sideline, so apparently he just got momentarily dinged, and he's apparently okay. Metcalf received a great ovation from his hometown fans out here in Seattle when introduced at the start of the game. Very evenly played opening quarter. Each team had a total offense of 61 yards. And it's a 3-3 football game. First and 10 Cardinals at the Seattle 13 and a half yard line. Gray is to the left side. Now Harris moves out of the slot man left. First and 10 Cardinals at the Seattle 14. And the handoff goes to Otis. Off tackle. Bangs down to about the 11 yard line. It is thrown back there. Steve Niehaus, the first man to make contact with Otis. And they pick up with about three for Jim Otis. Metcalf came out of there, and Steve Jones is into the game as the running back for the Cardinals. Cardinals offensive line, one of the best in football. Tom Banks at center. Bob Young and Conrad Dobler, the guards. Dan Deardorff and Roger Finney, the tackles. J.B. Kane starting at tight end today in place of the injured Jackie Smith. Second and seven Cardinals at the Seattle 11-yard line. Hart working out of an eye formation, drops back to throw. Jim Hart throwing into the end zone to Ike Harris, touchdown. Harris took it at the two and loped into the end zone for his first TD of the season and Jim Hart's first touchdown pass of the regular season. That time, Jimmy Hart was getting pressure from both sides as he looked down the middle of the field. Ike Harris coming across on the post pattern. He reached up. He jumped oh, a couple of feet off the ground. A fingertip catch into the end zone. Touchdown, Cardinals. So the Cardinals are on the board with the pass to the lanky wide receiver, Ike Harris, who took it around the three and went into the end zone. Here's Bakken with the extra point attempt. Bakken puts it up, and it's good. And the Cardinals have taken the lead out here in Seattle over the Seahawks. There's an official timeout, and the score, St. Louis 10, Seattle 3. Well, a touchdown pass from Jim Hart to Isaiah Ike Harris, Jr. from Iowa State. And for Ike Harris, his first touchdown pass in regular season National Football League play. The extra point by Bakken and the Cardinals lead it 10 to 3 as Bakken and the Cardinals get ready to kick off. Deep men are Larry or Steve Larson, Andy Bolton, and Lyle Blackwood. Here is the kick taken at the five-yard line by Larson. Larson to the 20, to the 25, up to the 28-yard line. Good return by Larson down the far sideline. Got it back to the 28-yard line, and Steve Niels was down to make the stop, and Seattle will be first and 10 from their own 29. We haven't seen Jim Zorn, the lefty quarterback, run yet, but he's very nifty in uh, faking to his back going into the line, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him take out around either end. He's a very nifty runner. Largent on that return. He's got a couple of fine passes. That was a 23-yard return. First and 10, Seattle at their own 29. Here's Zorn dropping back to pass. Has time. Completes it. Downfield to the tight end, Ron Howard. And Howard has stopped at the 45-yard line. And was stopped on the play by Mike Sensabaugh. 
Howard going up and taking the pass from the quarterback, Jim Zord. And the tight end, Ron Howard, latches onto a pass and gives the Seahawks the first down. Howard, 6-4, a third-year man out of Seattle University. First and 10 Seahawks at their own 46-yard line. That was a 17-yard game. Zorn with McCullum wide to the left side. Out wide to the right is Don Clune. They hand off going up the middle to Andrew Bolton. Bolton going over left guard, gets up to about the 48-yard line. And Greg Hartle, the middle linebacker, who's been in on a lot of tackles thus far today, makes the stop. The game was four. It will be second and six, Seattle. We're in the second quarter. 11.55 remaining in the second quarter. Cardinals leading Seattle 10 to 3. Steve Rabel, the rookie wide receiver, is out to the left side. Don Clune is wide to the right here as Zorn works on a counter play. Hartle bounces off the ball carrier, Andrew Bolton. Bolton had a big hole, and Hartle came over and closed it fast, but not before Bolton had moved into the 48 yard line. Stallings in on the tackle as well. So is Charlie Davis. And the pickup was about three. It's going to be third and two for the Seahawks. In at the Cardinal 46-yard line. Greg Hartle moved in very well to close that hole because Bolton was going a mile a minute, but Greg met him head on and stopped him. Now the wide receiver is Largent. He's a wing to the right side. Bolton and McKinnis are the running backs. First or third and two, Seattle at the Cardinal 46. And up going to Bolton, and he goes nowhere. Piled up. By the Cardinal front four, backed up by strong safety Kenny Reeves. Yankowski was the man who made the first hit on the play, and there is no gain. And the Seahawks will come up with fourth and two and send in the rookie putter Rick Engel. As another rookie, Pat Tilly, drops back for the Cardinals. Tilly out of Louisiana Tech, 5'10", 175 pounds. Engels. A rookie from Tulsa, a number three draft choice. At a 46.6 yard average in college football last season, which was second best in the nation in college punting. Engel stands at his 40, gets it away. It's a low punt as he tries to angle it out of bounds. Kelly lets it bounce, takes it at the 7. Kelly to the 10, Kelly to the 15, to the 17. Missed the run back by the rookie Pat Kelly to get it back to the 17 yard line. And down to make the stop was Randy Caulfield and Art Kuhn as the Cardinals will be first and 10 at their own 17. There's an official timeout on the score. St. Louis 10, Seattle 3. We're back in Seattle and uh, the Cardinals have a first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. A 38-yard punt by Ingles, a 10-yard return by Chile. The late score is fourth quarter. The Rams leading Atlanta 30-14. Dallas in the fourth period leading Philadelphia 27-7. Fourth period, Chicago 10, Detroit 3. And in the third, San Francisco 19, Green Bay 7. First and 10 Cardinals at their own 17-yard line as Jim Hart and the offensive unit comes back in. Here's the pitch to Metcalf, who's back in after an earlier injury. Tries a sweep, gets out to the 19-yard line, and the quarterback, Eddie McMillan, came over to make the stop. Helped out by the left side linebacker, Ken Getty. And the pickup on the play was about four for Metcalf. Terry had uh, gotten hit early in the, well, late in the first quarter, but he's okay now, and he ran very well on that play, although the Seahawks closed it down very well as he tried to sweep his right end. Second and six for the Cardinals at their own 21-yard line. Gray to the left side. Ike Harris wide right. Split backfield in behind. Veteran quarterback Jim Hart. Here's the handoff to Otis. The big hole. Otis outside the 30. Up to the far sideline across the 40 and chased out of bounds. At the 39-yard line and a penalty marker down. Eddie McMillan chased Otis out of bounds. And if memory serves me correctly... Well, we had a flag earlier in the football game, but we've had very few penalties, Bill. And that's surprising in that we have a new football team, the Seahawks, who have been very fluid on offense and defense. That's a personal foul against the Seahawks. Eddie McMillan, after Jim Otis was about three or four yards out of bounds, threw him down in front of the Seattle Seahawks bench. And uh, you don't need that when you're a new ball club. You give a team like the Cardinals and added 15 yards, and you're asking for trouble. And that's what the Seahawks and Eddie McMillan did on that play. Jim Otis has carried eight times for 65 yards. Mike Harris comes out of the game. 
and is shaken up, and Pat Kelly, the rookie wide receiver, is in. First and ten Cardinals with the ball after the run by Otis at the Seattle 46-yard line. 9.46 left until halftime. St. Louis 10. Seattle 3. Gray is to the right side. J.B. Kane now splits out of the slot man to the right side. And I pulls in as the tight end on the right side. And Tilly is the tight end on the left side. Here's the first down play. The handoff to Otis. Off tackle. And Otis bangs his way down to the 41-yard line. Ed Bradley, the middle linebacker, making the stop. Richard Harris in on the... Or Carol Barisic in on the tackle as well. And the gain for Otis was five yards, and it's second and five for the Cardinals at the Seattle 41-yard line. Cardinals opening on the road. Their first home game will be next Sunday in St. Louis against the Green Bay Packers. Metcalf and Otis in an eye formation behind Jim Hart on second and five. Here's Metcalf with a draw play. Big roll inside the 35, and Metcalf gets down to the 31-yard line. Mike Curtis, the veteran. The Seattle 41-yard line. Cardinals opening on the road. Their first home game will be next Sunday in St. Louis against the Green Bay Packers. Metcalf and Otis in an eye formation behind Jim Hart on second and five. Here's Metcalf on a draw play. Big hole inside the 35. And Metcalf gets down to the 31-yard line. Mike Curtis, the veteran, formerly with the Colts, makes the stop from his right linebacker spot. And it's a first down for the Cardinals at the Seattle 31-yard line. Cardinal offensive unit rolling very well now, especially across the front. They are blocking extremely well, catching Seattle, jumping too fast into their backfield. Metcalf, six carries, 67 yards for the Cardinals. First and 10, St. Louis at the Seattle 31. Both the wide receivers left. Here they work, uh, draw point, Otis, and Otis is stopped behind the line of scrimmage for no gain on the play. Knee out, and Richard Harris and Mike Curtis all in on the stop for Seattle, and there's a loss of three yards in the play. Moves the ball back to the 34-yard line of the Seahawks. Otis comes out of there. Steve Jones goes into the ball game for the Cardinals. So Jones and Metcalf for the setbacks. Kelly is a wide receiver left. Mel Gray is wide to the right side. Backs are split in behind Jim Hart on second and 13. Hart straight back to throw. Has time. Down the middle. And it's off and Dave Brown went up in front of the receiver and appeared to have an interception, but couldn't hold it, and it is incomplete. And Brown bangs his hands in disgust as he thought he should have had it. Well, that time, Dave Brown picked Jim Hart off because he was going straight down the middle to Terry Metcalf, who was behind Dave Brown. Dave Brown apparently working in a zone pattern, came right across in front of Metcalf, should have had it, and if he had gotten down the left sideline, I think he could have gone all the way. I was kind of surprised that Jim didn't see him coming across because normally you can read those safeties and those cornerbacks back there when they're crossing in that zone pattern. The Seahawks fans want some defense. It's third and 13 Cardinals at the 34-yard line. Hart and the Cardinals as Hart goes straight back to throw. Throws it down the middle, complete to Steve Jones, and he is hit hard at the 29-yard line by Ed Bradley, and the Cardinals are well short of the first down, and Jones was hit quite a lick by the middle linebacker, Ed Bradley. And the Cardinals fail to move the football as they move downfield, and now will come in with a field goal try by Buck and Worley in to hold at the 36-yard line. So it's going to be a 46-yard attempt by the veteran field goal kicker, from Wisconsin, Jim Bakken. Worley puts it down, Bakken boots it, it is long enough, and it is no good. Wide to the left as Bakken misses from 46 yards. By well, that time, the Seahawks didn't get their hands on the ball. They had pretty good pressure, but Jim simply hit it wrong and it drifted off to the right side. Now there's an official timeout with the score, St. Louis 10 and Seattle 3. Just announcing some final scores. Cincinnati defeated Denver 17 to 7. Seahawks first and 10 after the 46-yard missed field goal by the Cardinals and Zorn and the Seahawks offense back into the game at their own 29-yard line and Zorn in the first down play back to throw. Throwing and completing it to the tight end, Ron Howard. 
out to the 37-yard line. Howard tackled by Greg Hartle and Mike Pensabaugh along with Mark Arneson. But Howard goes up in the air and gets the ball out to the 38-yard line, and it's going to be second and one for Seattle. Tell you the truth, Bill, I've been very surprised by the Seahawks play thus far. Well, Jim Zorn is passing off pass play action, which is freezing the front four, and that gives them more time. They're not getting the rush on him. Sam McCollum is the wide receiver to the left side. Out wide to the right is Don Clune. Second and one, and they go with an off tackle shot to Hugh McKinnis, and McKinnis has stopped cold. No gain on the play. Marvin Upshaw, one of the people there, along with John Zuck in on the play. And there is no gain, and it's going to be third and one for the Seahawks. Or there appeared to be no gain in the play. Let's see where they're marking that ball down, and they're going to bring the yardsticks out. Jack Patera, the 42-year-old head coach of the Seahawks, looks on from the opposite side of the field. It is the first down for Seattle. Well, sometimes if you don't run for the yardage, you can get it on the way they mark the ball. That's exactly right, because where he was stopped, I agree with you. I thought that Marvin Upshaw met him right at the line and threw him back. But the marking of the ball is all important, and they marked it for a first down. Jack Patera, the... Head coach of the Seahawks, a former guard and linebacker, a Viking assistant coach for seven years, also an assistant with the Giants and Rams. Here is Zorn on the first down play, hands off to the running back, Andrew Bolton, Bolton across the 40. Had some running room, but it was closed up quickly, and John Zook came over to make the stop along with Greg Hartle. We're going to pause here, 15 seconds for station identification. This is the Cardinals Football Network. Frederick Roofing, 46 years in the roofing and siding business, says for a hole in your roof or for a whole new roof, call Gene Frederick, 645-2000, in the center of St. Louis County, 8000 Manchester at Hanley. KMOX FM in St. Louis. Second and six for Seattle. Zorn is back to throw the pass batted away by Mark Arneson as it left Zorn's hand, Marneson firing in from that right side linebacker spot was on top of the passer and as the left-handed quarterback Zorn went to throw, Arneson got a uh, hand on it and batted it down before it ever had a chance to cross the line of scrimmage. Andrew Bolton, the leading rusher thus far in the game for the Seahawks, eight carries, 33 yards. Bolton a hard runner and a quick burst of speed, 6'1", a 205-pound rookie out of fist. Sam McCollum wide to the left side. Bloon is wide to the right. It is third and six as Zorn again is back to throw. Rushes on, throws, completed down the middle at the 46-yard line to Steve Largent, the rookie, and Largent was tackled immediately on the play by Mark Arneson, and they're short of the first down. And the Seahawks on fourth and three will be forced to punt. Gary Hammond drops back this time for the Cardinals. We have four minutes and 57 seconds left until halftime. St. Louis Cardinals 10, Seattle 3. In to do the putting is Rick Engel out of Tulsa University, a rookie putter. Stands at the Seattle 32-yard line. Now drops back to about the 31 to take the pass from center. Gets the snap from center and booms a fine punt. Drives Hammond back to the seven-yard line. Hammond dances his way to the 10, up to the 15, and it's stopped there. Gary Hammond got it back to the 15-yard line and was stopped in the play by Stan Green. And they think a lot of Stan Green, a backup linebacker to Mike Curtis and a number two draft choice, and Green got downfield fast and made the stop. Green is the rookie out of Florida. Well, the Cardinals seem to have more success by throwing the ball, and I anticipate that Jim Hard will go up top a lot more here. He hasn't gone on the deep post or the deep fly to either Mel Gray or Pat Kelly. By the way, Ike Harris shaken up, but he will return later. Cardinal wide receivers are to the right side. Now Kane shifts in as a tight end to the right. Gray, the only wide receiver. Here's the handoff going to Otis. Otis picks his way across the 20. Out to the 23-yard line goes Jim Otis. Picks up about seven on the play, and Mike Curtis, along with Dave Brown, coming up from his free safety, came over to make the stop. Marking the ball out around the 24 or 25-yard line. They have it marked at the 23 and a half. And it's going to be second and two for the Cardinals. With the ball at the 29-yard line. Otis now 11 carries for 74 yards. 
He had a thousand yards plus last season. Gray is wide to the right. They have Kane and Chile working as tight ends. Chile normally a wide receiver, and they have him in tight in this formation. Hand off to Otis, another big hole as Otis goes over right guard, gets out to the 33-yard line. Al Matthews makes the stop. Conrad Dobler and Dan Deerdorf opening up some gaping holes. And Otis moves out for a nine-yard gain and a Cardinal first down to the 33-yard line. Dave Tipton, the left defensive end, down on one knee. He took a tremendous shot on a trap play. Again, Conrad Dobler coming across and really blasting Tipton. And I'll tell you, when that offensive line has that trap working, if you're a defensive tackle and come firing across that line, you don't see the guard coming from the other side. It's a blind side hit, and that can really ring your bells, and that's what happened to Dave Tipton on that side. Tom Banks, perhaps the quickest center in all of National Football League play, can run like a halfback when it comes to making that trap play. That defensive tackle steps across, reading in the backfield, and suddenly, bam! And that's what happened to Dave Tipton, a great block by Tom Banks and Conrad Dover. First and 10 Cardinals at their own 33-yard line. Kelly to the right side, Gray to the left as the Cardinals now shift Metcalf back into the backfield as they had him originally lined up as a wing. Here's Hart on the first down play. Back to throw. Going for the long bomb for Kelly. Kelly bumps by the receiver Eddie McMillan to take the line down around the 20-yard line. And there's no flag, and it's an incompleted forward pass. They were both going for the ball. Kelly actually bumped into McMillan as he looked back over his shoulder for the ball from quarterback Jim Hart, and it's incomplete. You know, Bill, you talk about Tom Banks and uh, what a fine center he is. Banks, of course, is uh, an interesting young man. And uh, you see him before a football game such as today. He's as loose as a goose. He's joking, talking, coming up with all kinds of funny remarks. But once that ball game starts, boy, is he business. Don't blow a whistle around him while you're talking to him, or he might lay you out in about two minutes flat. Here's the handoff to Metcalf on a delay action play. Metcalf inside the 35, down to the 33-yard line. And... Mel Gray right down beside him trying to block someone up. The tackle was made by Richard Harris, the right defensive end, but not before Terry Metcalf had moved the ball down to the 33-yard line and picked up about six yards on the play. So it's going to be third and four for St. Louis down at the Seattle 33-yard line. Timeout call by the Cardinals here. Jim Hart comes over to the bench. They'd like to put some more points on the board before the halftime intermission. We have 108 remaining until halftime. Ike Harris sitting on the bench with an ice pack behind his neck. It's kind of tough to tell whether it's a pinched nerve or whether his neck was snapped back on a previous play. Ike had caught a 12-yard touchdown pass from Jim Hart leading off the second quarter to put the Cardinals up 10-3. The Seahawks spot four has not played badly here. They put some pressure on Jim Hart. And on the play that he just threw away, uh, Jim had to duck under two on-rushing Seattle Seahawks defensive linemen. So they put pretty good pressure. And so far, as I said before, the Seahawks certainly have not embarrassed themselves. The Cardinals having to go through their full offensive repertoire to get some points on the board because Seattle is giving up nothing. He brought out a good point on that pass play uh, two plays ago, Bill, when Metcalf was wide open. Houdini wouldn't have been able to see him down at the 15-yard line ducking under that rush that the uh, Seahawks threw at Jim Hart. He had to duck under two people and then just fired the ball away to unload. Third and four, St. Louis at the 33-yard line of Seattle. Cardinals with a 10-3 lead. Hart a straight back to throw, screen pass to the right side to Jones. Jones at the 30, has the first down, gets down to the 20-yard line and is thrown out of bounds by Eddie McMillan. Little screen pass says... Jones flared out of the backfield to the right side and gets down to the 20-yard line for another Cardinal first down and got out of bounds to stop the clock with exactly one minute remaining until halftime. That play was made on a great block by Conrad Dobler on the left side linebacker Ken Geddes. Ken Geddes was standing right in front of Jones when he caught the ball, but Conrad Dobler leveled him, enabling Steve Jones to step inside and run out of bounds. And for those of our KMOX audience who have been following the game on FM earlier, the Cardinal baseball team won this afternoon, beating the Mets 6-5. to five. First and 10 for the football Cardinals at the Seattle 20-yard line. Here's Hart on the first down play. They wait to Metcalf as he picks up. Metcalf gets to the 18 and a penalty marker is thrown. Metcalf had to fight his way down to the 18-yard line, so he picks up a couple. 
And the stop made by Steve Niehaus, the number one draft choice of the Seahawks out of Notre Dame, along with Mike Curtis. The penalty is against the St. Louis Cardinals. So the markoff will be against the Cardinals. Metcalf had picked up two on the play, as the officials now discuss it. Oh, was it a holding penalty, Bill? Yes, it was holding along the offensive line. He threw the flag away from the play. The play was coming around the left side, and he threw the flag on the right side, so after the play was in progress, somebody was holding. Conrad Dobler. So Dobler is the man called with the holding infraction, and the Cardinals now will have first down over again, and now 20 yards to go at the Seattle 30-yard line. We have 54 seconds left until halftime. Cardinals have two timeouts remaining. They lead the football game 10 to 3 over the Seattle Seahawks. Mel Gray to the right side, Pat Tilly to the left. Cardinals come up over the ball. Officials hold them up momentarily. Now they let them get loose to run this offensive play. Jim Hart on first and 20 at the Seattle 30 yard line. Is straight back to throw. Hart. Throwing down for Mel Gray in the corner, and Gray has it and steps out of bounds around the three-yard line. Great catch by Gray as he got away from Eddie McMillan and stepped out of bounds at the three-yard line. That was a great throw by Jimmy Hart. He faded back into the pocket. The rush was coming. Jim Hart threw the ball. He didn't even see where Mel Gray was. He knew where Mel Gray should have been. He fired that ball off on the right side. McMillan was all over Mel Gray. But the ball landed in Mel Gray's hand about one foot inside the boundary, and Mel Gray had it. What a tremendous throw by Jimmy Hart. And that comes from working time and time again with your receiver because the defender had his hands right in front of Jimmy Hart's face when that ball was unleashed. He couldn't possibly have seen where the ball went. 47 seconds left until halftime. First and goal, Cardinals at the Seattle three-yard line. And the Cardinals are going to stop the clock and call timeout here as Hart wants to come over and confer at the bench with the coaching staff. They had had the clock stop when Gray got out of bounds, but obviously there was some mix-up as to what they wanted to run. And Hart comes over to the bench as the Cardinals have called timeout here with 47 seconds left in the first half. What a big surprise. The announcement here in the King Dome that O.J. the Juice Simpson has reported back to Buffalo. That is a stunning development in that O.J. originally was going to the Rams, then he was going to the Raiders, the deadline had passed for trading him out of the AFC to the NFC. The Rams deal was off. There was still talk that he might go to someplace else. But O.J. Simpson has returned to Buffalo, and I'm sure the Buffalo fans are as happy as can be because that football team certainly is not the same without O.J. Simpson. Bills play tomorrow night, their home opener, against the Miami Dolphins. So O.J. Simpson, nice to see him back in football. He's too good a football player to be a movie actor this young in age. I'm sure Don Schuler is wondering, what in the world did you have to do report on the day before we have to play you? Because O.J. Simpson has given the Dolphins fits in past years, and there's not going to be any problem in terms of timing because O.J. knows the Buffalo offense. So I would guess that O.J. is going to see some action tomorrow night because he always stays in shape. You really think so? Oh, sure. I much, I'll much. bet you a steak dinner. All right, <laughs> you're on. I'll bet you a steak dinner that O.J. plays tomorrow night. He may be in uniform, but I don't. I don't know if he'll play. It hasn't had a workout. He's just joined them today. Doesn't need it. We'll have a debate at halftime. Stay tuned. It'll be interesting. Here the Cardinals go. First and goal from the three-yard line. I formation with 47 seconds left in the half. Hart is back to throw. Hart ducks under. Now tries to run and gets back to the five-yard line as he almost was decked back at the ten. And Steve Niehaus along with. Mike Curtis finally brings Jim Hart down as Hart had to run up the middle to get back to the five-yard line. And it's second and goal for the Cardinals at the five. 39 seconds, Cardinals don't huddle as they're in the hurry-up offense. And Hart goes back to throw. Hart looking into the end zone, throws down the middle, and it is incomplete. Pass intended for the tight end, J.B. Kane. He was well covered by Al Matthews. The safety, and that stops the clock with 29 seconds left here in the first half. And the Cardinals will have third and goal at the Seattle five-yard line. Al Matthews was all over J.V. King. J.V. was the only receiver that Jim Hart had open that time. 
first Jim will go to some rollout action to spread those linebackers out because so far the Seahawks defenders have been all over the Cardinal receivers. Third and goal for the Cardinals at the five. Kelly is wide to the right. Mel Gray wide to the left. Hart is eight of 12 passing for 83 yards. Third and goal and Hart is straight back to throw. Looks into the end zone, throws and it's incomplete. Going down in the far corner intended for Pat Kelly. Kelly was well covered on the play by Eddie McMillan. And the Cardinals will have to settle for the field goal here with 25 seconds remaining. In the first half, Cardinals are leading at 10 to 3. They had the ball down to the three yard line, but couldn't get it across on three cracks. So Bakken comes in. Worley will hold at the 12, a 22 yard attempt by Jim Bakken, who has kicked a field goal earlier in the game. As we run down to the end of the first half, Worley puts it down. Bakken puts it up, and it is good. Bakken, a 22 yard field goal. And the Cardinals have a 10-point margin here, 13 to 3 over Seattle, with 21 seconds left in the second quarter. Well, the Cardinals that time had all kinds of problem in, problems inside the 10-yard line. Jim Hart was consistently under a heavy rush as linebackers were jumping over their defensive linemen trying to get in on Hart. But more importantly, they were double covering Mel Gray on one side and double covering Pat Tilly on the other side. And then the strong safety was coming up to cover J.B. Kane with the middle linebacker dropping back. So Jim Hart really didn't have any targets. That was a great series of defensive plays by the Seattle, Seattle Seahawks. Andy Bolton and Steve Largent going back for Seattle to take Bakken's kickoff. We still have 21 seconds remaining until halftime. St. Louis 13 and Seattle 3. A season opener for both teams and a career opener for the Seattle Seahawks. Their first regular season game ever in the National Football League. I can't wait until tomorrow night, Dan Kelly. I think the juice is going to run back some kicks. At least. Oh, no. Now you didn't say run back kicks. So you said he, he knows the offense. He'd run some plays. Okay, I'll say that, too. He's going to run some That's plays. what the state dinner bet's about. Okay, you're on. <laughs> Here comes Bakken with the kickoff late in the second quarter. Taken at the eight-yard line by Andy Bolton. Bolton to the 15, to the 20, cut to the far sideline, across the 30, 35, and is hit at the 38-yard line by Steve Jones, who got downfield in a hurry. Steve Niels was down to help him. And the Seahawks played here with 12 seconds left in the second quarter. will have a first down at the 38-yard line. Well, they have to watch Jim Zorn now. The lefty can really fire that football, and Sam McCollum and uh, Rabel and the other wide receivers can really run, so the Cardinal secondary will have to be loose now. Don Clune is wide to the right. Sam McCollum wide to the left side. Here is the first down play with a handoff going to Hugh McKinnis. McKinnis gets to the 40, out to about the 41-yard line, and John Zook makes the stop. Cardinals in the first half as the seconds run down. Have had a total offense of 269 yards, 186 running, 83 passing. And it's a 13 to 3 lead the Cardinals have here. Ball is at the 40 yard line. They stopped the clock with eight seconds left, and I guess the Seahawks, yes, they have called timeout. We mentioned uh, Don Coriel being from Seattle, Terry Metcalf. Mark Arneson, who made the or helped out on that last tackle, is from. Bellingham, Washington, which is only about 100 yards north of Seattle. So, Mr. Arneson back in his home part of the country today. Zorn heads back into the huddle. The Seattle quarterback, 6'2", a 200-pounder. He played a little bit in the preseason last year with the Dallas Cowboys and was one of the late Cowboy Cups. Sam McCollum is wide to the left side. Don Clune is the wide receiver right. Eight seconds left in the half. Zorn back to throw. Throws it down the middle and completes it up at midfield to Ron Howard, the tight end. He's tackled immediately by Larry Stallings. And the Seahawks call a timeout again with three seconds remaining until halftime. And they move the ball into Cardinal territory. And we'll have one more shot at it. And mark it right at midfield. And we have three seconds left until halftime. 
Someone else we should say hello to along the Cardinal Network today is Mr. Bob Starr, who you'll be hearing on these broadcasts throughout the football season once the baseball Cardinals end their baseball season. Mr. Starr, no doubt, just driving home from the ballpark in St. Louis, and uh, like the rest of you, I hope enjoying the broadcast, which sees the Cardinals leading 13-3. to I know you like the score anyway. I'll tell you what, I'm sure Mr. Starr is demanding that we bring home a double victory on this road trip, and so far the Seahawks certainly aren't rolling over and playing dead to allow that to happen. Some finals, Houston 20, Tampa Bay nothing, Chicago 10, Detroit 3, San Francisco 26, Green Bay 14, Dallas over Philadelphia 28-7, and the fourth quarter, San Diego 30, Kansas City 16. So the Seahawks here with one last shot before the halftime intermission, just three seconds left. They send the wide receiver Largent out to the left side. Bloon is a wide receiver too, and here's Zorin back to throw under some pressure. Ducks away from it, throws long, and it is almost intercepted, but batted away by Norm Thompson. Pass intended for Sam McCollum. It was well underthrown, and Thompson could have had a gift at the 20-yard line, but on the last play of the half, just got his hands on it, couldn't hold it, and it bounced away free as an incompleted forward pass. So the fans here in Seattle, around 65,000 of them, have seen their first half of National Football League season regular season play, and the Seattle Seahawks walk off the field, trailing the Cardinals by a 10-point margin. That's the end of the first half of the score. The St. Louis Cardinals 13, the Seattle Seahawks 3. And along with quarterback Steve Prozakowicz, had one heck of a night in Los Angeles. Here the Cardinals lead Seattle 13 to 3 as Jim Bakken gets ready to kick off. Lyle Blackwood, Andy Bolton, and Steve Largent are the deep men for Seattle, all standing back er, in the vicinity of the 10-yard line to the goal line, with Bolton being the deep man standing at the five. So we're ready with the second half kickoff as Jim Bakken puts his boot to the ball. It comes down and is taken by Bolton at the 10. He's to the 15, to the 20, out to the 24-yard line, and a good tackle made on the play by Jeff Severson, who was down fast on the Cardinal specialty teams, and Seattle has the ball, first and 10, at their own 26-yard line as we start the second half of play. Jim Bakken accounted for six of the Cardinal points with field goals. The other Cardinal points came on a... Extra point by Bakken and an 12-yard touchdown pass from Jim Hart to the wide receiver Ike Harris. Jim Zorn in to run the Seattle offense, sends a man in motion to the left side, hands off to the second back through and a loose football as Bolton was hit and fumbled and the Cardinals recover at the 26-yard line. Let's see who comes up with the football. And I believe it's Ron Yankowski who did recover it. Bolton really never had control of the ball as he hit the hole and it popped loose. And Yankelski in, uh, also in on the play was uh, Charlie Davis for the Cardinals. But I think it was Yankelski who came up with a loose ball, and the Cardinals have a first down at the Seattle 26-yard line. Pat Tilly is the wide receiver to the left side. He is playing in place of uh, Ike Harris, who was injured earlier. Gray is wide to the right. Metcalf, a notice of the setbacks in behind Jim Hart. The handoff going to Otis. Otis on an off tackle flat, puts it to the outside and is hit back behind the line of scrimmage by Mike Curtis. The veteran linebacker, along with Rolly Woolsey, coming up from his quarterback spot. And there's a little bit of a loss in the play of about a yard. Surprisingly, Mike Curtis uh, requested to be moved to the outside. He played all of those years at Baltimore where he had the great career in the middle. But he's on the outside now. And it'll be interesting to see what... Mike Curtis can do with a Terry Metcalf or Steve Jones coming out into that flat. Jones is in replacing Otis right now at his second and 11 St. Louis at the Seattle 27 yard line. Kelly and Gray wide to the right. Here they work the foul play to Jones and he's tripped up by Richard Harris behind the line of scrimmage. And there is a, another loss or at least no gain on the play as Jones was tripped up by Richard Harris, a late cut from the Chicago Bears. And it's going to be third and 11 for the Cardinals at the Seattle 27-yard line. So the Seahawks defense reacting well after a fumble by Bolton gave the Cardinals excellent field position. Kelly wide left, Gray wide right. Third and 11 Cardinals at the Seattle 27. Hart goes straight back to throw. As time throwing down the middle into the end zone to Kelly, touchdown! Pat Kelly, the rookie wide receiver. Got in behind Dave Brown 
and took it on the dead run in the end zone. And Tilly, in his first regular season pro game, gets the National Football League touchdown. Jim Hardy had all afternoon to throw that football. Pat Tilly went down on a deep post. He got behind the secondary. He got behind at number 22. That's Dave Brown, who came over from Pittsburgh. And right on the money was Jim Hardy. Here is Bakken with the extra point tie. A try, whirly hole. Bakken puts it up. It is good. And the Cardinals have increased their lead here over Seattle early in the third quarter on a great pass. Jim Hart's second touchdown pass of the game. This one to the rookie wide receiver, Pat Tilly. And like Ike Harris, who caught his first regular season touchdown pass in the first quarter, Tilly does the same here in the third. There's an official timeout on the score. The Cardinals 20, the Seahawks 3. Jim Bakken getting ready to kick off. The Cardinals leading it 20 to 3 here early in the third quarter. Bakken booms an end over end down to the six yard line to Andy Bolton. Here's Bolton to the 20, up the middle to the 25, and it's tripped up there by Steverson, Duran, Neal, and Ray White, all in on the stop for the Cardinals. So the Cardinals with a 20 to 3 lead on the touchdown pass from Jim Hart to Pat Kelly. Now we'll try and Bottle the Seahawks up in their own end of the field. The Seattle comes up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. We have 12.43 left in the third quarter. Sam McCullum is the wide receiver to the right side. Don Clune wide to the left. Tight end is Ron Howard. He's to the left side. Quarterback Jim Zorn in the first down play. Going back to throw, a little swing pass out to the right side, and it's incomplete, thrown low, and behind the receiver, Sam McCullum, it is incomplete. Incidentally, we mentioned the Cardinals home opener next week in St. Louis against the Green Bay Packers. Cardinals announced that there are good seats available for all their remaining home games except for the October 17th game against the Dallas Cowboys and for that game there are single seats available only. Cardinal box office is open each day from 9 until 5 Monday to Friday. Good seats available, singles only left for that Dallas game. Second and 10 for Zorn and the Seahawks. Zorn back to throw, throws out to the 38-yard line and complete. No, they rule that Sam McCollum tracked the ball. McCollum fell as he made the catch, and they rule it as an incompleted forward pass and rule that the ball was trapped by Sam McCollum. Well, the official was in perfect position as the throw came down. It appeared as though McCollum caught that football. I'm not sure that that was an incomplete pass, but there is also a penalty on the play. And they're talking with the Seahawks, so uh, they might get another shot at this as both Clarence Duran and Jeff Severson come in. Here's the illegal procedure against the Seahawks. So that play would have been wiped out anyway, but I could have uh, almost got a steak dinner that that was a complete pass, but I've already got one steak dinner out. No more this afternoon, Mr. Kelly. The call was an elite in an illegal formation against the Seahawks. Uh, it's going to be second and 10, and whether McCullum caught the ball or not is now elementary. Second and 10, Seattle at their own 25-yard line. Cardinals leading at 20 to 3 here in the third quarter. Jim Zorn, the rookie quarterback, dropping back to throw. Zorn throwing on the near sideline and intending it for Don Clune. Incomplete over defending on the play with Steverson. Also over on that side was Roger Worley, as they had the play well covered. Steverson comes into the ball game along with Clarence Duran on passing situations, and they take out Greg Hartle and also the strong safety Ken Reed. And that was the case on that play. Rookie putter Rick Ingalls will do the putting for Seattle, standing at his 10-yard line. It is fourth and 10. As Gary Hammond drops back for the Cardinals to the St. Louis 35-yard line. Pass from center, a little low, but it is picked out by Ingalls. A low putt here. Hammond on the dead run at the 43, out to midfield. Hammond... Hit at the 47-yard line on a good hit by Ron Howard, the tight end, who got downfield, and as Hammond crossed midfield was hit, he falls to about the 47-yard line. That was one heck of a block by Bob Bell put on Bob Finchin, and Bob is limping off the field now. He was really hit hard by Bell. Now there's an official timeout. The score is St. Louis 20 and Seattle 3. First and 10 for the St. Louis Cardinals at the 48-yard line of the Seattle Seahawks. Mel Gray wide to the left side. Now Tilly switches out of the slot back to the left. High formation in behind Hart. Here's the pitch going to Metcalf on a sweep to this, the short side. Metcalf shakes back, reverses the field back at his own 45. Now back to midfield and cracks inside the 
45 down to the 43-yard line of the Seahawks. Metcalf runs about 60 yards to pick up about five before being stopped by Mike Curtis and Al Matthews. And the game was five on the play, and Metcalf may be the most winded football player in the history of the game for a five-yard game, Bill. I'd give a million dollars to know what goes through the mind of Jim Hart when he hands off to Metcalf one way and sees him coming back the other way, making Hart a blocker. <laughs> Second and five, Cardinals in at the Seattle 43-yard line. Gray and Tilly both are wide to the right side. Jones and Otis the setback. Hart is back to throw. Sideline pattern complete to Gray, and Gray is knocked out of bounds at the 38-yard line by Al Matthews. Jim Hart completes his 11th pass of the game out of 15 attempts. He's hit on two touchdowns, and the Cardinals have a 20-3 lead here over Seattle. They're going to be game is about four on that play to Gray, so it's going to be third and above one for St. Louis at the Seattle 38-yard line. Tilly comes out of the game. Gray is the only wide receiver. He is out to the left side. It is third and about a half yard for the Cardinals at the Seattle 38. Hand off to Otis. He hurdles over. Penalty flags fly, and Otis gets down to about the 37-yard line. Stopped by the whole front side of the Seahawks defense, and the penalty is against the Cardinals. Just looking on that last play, when they took out Tilly, they sent in Tom Brahaney as the extra tight end. Jackie Smith is in uniform, but injured and hasn't played today. Cardinals were nailed on a penalty infraction earlier in the game when they sent in Henry Allison, and he didn't report to the officials for the number change. This time it's an illegal motion penalty against the Cardinals. So it's going to be third down and about five and a half yards to go. The ball back at the 43-yard line of the Seahawks. Tilly back in the game, comes wide right. Gray is the receiver out to the left side. Kane is the tight end left. Steve Jones was a wing, now switches back into the backfield along with Wayne Morris. Here's Hart on the third and sixth play. Back to throw. Throws down the middle. Completed the 40-yard line to Steve Jones. And he is really rattled by Ed Bradley. Right at the 40-yard line as he made the reception. And the Cardinals are short of the first down. And will be forced to punt as they come up forward and fourth and three. Quite a hit by Ed Bradley on Steve Jones. Ed Bradley along with Dave Brown, the two veterans who came in the veteran allocation and... Bradley is a pretty good, pretty good linebacker. The Seattle Seahawks have some good talent on defense. Cardinals rookie punter Jerry Joyce into the game. Stands at his own 45. Dave Brown and Lyle Blackwood, the deep men for Seattle, stand at the Seahawks 10-yard line. Joyce handles the pass from center. Tries to angle the ball out of bounds. Booms it high and into the end zone and through the end zone. He was aiming for the sideline, but kicked it a little bit too well, actually. And the ball will come out to the 20-yard line, where Seattle will put it into play. First and 10. 10-32 remaining here in the third quarter. St. Louis 20 and the Seattle Seahawks 3. Well, the complexion of the game has changed now. The Cardinals know the Seahawks are going to throw more. And in the last series of downs, that defense really came on strong with the rush. Don Kloon, the wide receiver to the right side. Sam McCullum, the... Wide receiver left as Jim Zorn calls the signals on first and 20. Seattle at their own 20. Zorn throwing out to the far sideline for Clone. He makes the catch. It is wrestled out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Norm Thompson over there. So is Kenny Reeves. And the pickup on the play is five yards. Clone, the wide receiver. 6'3", 195 pounds. Third-year uh, uh, third man out of Pennsylvania. Formerly played for the Giants. Over the ball at center is Fred Hoagland. Wide receiver is McCullum. Out to the right side with Steve Largent in the game as a wing to the right. Second down play. They go with Bolton. Off tackle. Bolton gets to the 27 to the 28. And is game tackled there by three or four Cardinals. Ron Yankowski in the play. So is Charlie Davis. And it's going to be third and one. Greg Hartle was in on that stop as well for St. Louis. Dan, you mentioned Don McClune. They think so much of him until they traded Ahmad Rashad, who coming into this season was expected to be the Seahawks' primary receiver. Don Clune, rather, not McClune. Yeah, I was looking at my spotting board here. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Third and one for the Cardinals at their own 29, or for the Seahawks at their own 29-yard line. I formation as Zorn, the quarterback, rolls to his right, being chased by Reeves, gets the block, and falls across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Good key block by John Demery on Ken Reeves to shake Zorn loose for the first down. Reeves had the play smelled out as Zorn on third and one. Tried to cross up the Cardinals by calling a rollout play and rolled to his right and picked up the first down. Zorn, an excellent runner, as I mentioned before. That's the first time he's actually run the ball from a set play, but he can run it and he will run it. But I'm sure Jack Patera is not that excited about his number one quarterback running that much because the mortality rate on quarterbacks last year was astronomical. They've picked up Bill Munson in the last week or so, but he isn't in uniform today. The backup man is Neil Graff. Here is the quarterback, Zorn, on first and ten. Back to throw. Throwing for crew and one hand on it, but couldn't hold it. Incomplete. Reeves over defending on the play. Arneson had drifted back. So was Sensabaugh in the area. Pass was intended for Clune, who got one hand on it, but couldn't hold it. Seahawks have another quarterback in the person of Steve Meyer, who was their number four draft choice. Some other scores. Washington defeated the Giants 19 to 17. Minnesota 40, New Orleans 9, the Rams 30, Atlanta 14 at halftime, Oakland 7, and Pittsburgh 7. Second and 10 for Seattle at their own 32-yard line. Here is Rod Zorn, the left-handed passer, throwing to Kroon, had one hand on it, and then was hit by Worley and couldn't hold on. Good hit by Worley to shake it loose from Don Kroon, as Jim Zorn, the left-handed rookie passer, Almost clicked the clone. That's very good, Mr. Kelly. He clicked the clone. But well, even intentional. <laughs> that time, Clune was falling down with the ball still on his fingertips, and he juggled it three times with Worley still on his back before it finally dropped three. Seahawks have called a timeout here. Don Testerman is into the game now for Seattle as a running back, a rookie out of Clemson. There's an official timeout, and the score, with 8.20 left in the third quarter, the Cardinals 20, the Seahawks 3. So the Seahawks have called timeout. We have 8.20 left in the third quarter. The Cardinals leading Seattle 20 to 3. And with the Seahawks falling behind on some of these plays, they are putting in four wide receivers, and they have that situation right now. Largent is in, Kloon is in, McCollum's in, Howard is in. Here's Zorn on the passing play, going back to throw, throwing it, picked off by the Cardinals. Intercepted by Sensabaugh, and he runs it back into the 23-yard line, picking it off around the 35. And Mike Sensabaugh, the former Kansas City player, picks off his first pass as a Cardinal and runs it into the 23-yard line of the Seattle Seahawks. Let's pause 15 seconds for station identification. This is the Cardinals Football Network. Know the sweetest way to get your licks in? Chapman's Ice Cream. What's more, you'll get a big kick out of that subtle little difference in the taste. Chapman's Ice Cream. This is KMOX and KMOX FM, St. Louis. First and ten for Jim Hart and the Cardinals after the sensible interception. Here's an off-tackle play to Otis. Otis a big hole inside the 15 down to the 12-yard line. Still on his feet as they couldn't haul him down. Dave Brown, one of the first people to make contact, along with the strong safety, Al Matthews. And they mark the ball down around the 12-yard line, which is close to first down territory for the Cardinals. And it is the St. Louis first down at the Seattle 12. Otis has carried 15 times, now for 96 yards. On that interception, the Cardinals had a stunt on with Zook, the defensive end, going inside, and Marvin Upshaw swinging around the outside. He threw it right into the middle of the zone, rotating to the right side, and Sensabaugh stepped right in front to pick it off. Gray wide right. Pat Chilly is the slot man to the right side. Metcalf and Otis in the backfield. First and ten Cardinals at the 12-yard line. Here's Otis on a sweep. Otis loses his footing back at the 14-yard line, and then Ed Bradley pops on top of him and holds him there, and there will be a loss in the play. They mark the ball at the 13-yard line, so there's a loss of a yard by Jim Otis. Here comes Steve Jones into the game. Jones comes in to replace Otis. Metcalf is the other running back. Second and 11 for the Cardinals at the Seattle 13-yard line. Gray is to the left, Chile to the right. J.B. Kane is the tight end to the left side. 
Jones was a wing, now switches back into a regular backfield position behind Jim Hart. Here's a quick opener to Metcalf inside the 10 down to the 8-yard line. Goes Jerry Metcalf, knee out, making the stop along with Richard Harris, the right defensive end. And the pickup by Metcalf was five. It's going to be third and six for St. Louis. The ball resting just inside the Seattle Seahawks nine-yard line. Metcalf has carried 10 times for 85 yards to the Cardinals' ground game with Metcalf and Otis has been sound. Ray is to the left. Kelly is to the right. Metcalf is a wing to the left side. Now switches back into a split backfield position along with Steve Jones. Hart, the quarterback, dropping straight back to throw. Hart looking into the end zone, throwing for J.B. Kane, and it was high over his head as the play was well defended by Dave Brown. And it's incomplete, and that will bring up a fourth down play. And the Cardinals will try another field goal. Jim Bakken has kicked a couple already today. And we'll try and add to the Cardinal lead right here. Worley is in to hold at the 16-yard line. So it will be a 26-yard attempt by veteran field goal kicker Jim Bakken. Pass from center by Brahaney is good. Bakken gets the kick up, and it is good. And Bakken with a 26-yard field goal. Makes the score, the Cardinals 23 and Seattle 3. Well, that makes two times that the Cardinals have been inside the Seattle Seahawks 20-yard line and have had to settle for a field goal. On that particular play, Jim Hart, the veteran quarterback that he is, looked all around the end zone. He saw every player was covered or double covered. He simply threw it over the head of the tight end on that play, J.B. Kane, and settled for the three points instead. Five minutes and 47 seconds remaining here in the third period. Cardinals 23 and Seattle 3 as the Seahawks have battled the Cardinals pretty evenly for the, for the first quarter and a half of this football game. So the Cardinals, under head coach Don Coriel, have now built up a 20-point lead on Seattle. Jim Bakken getting ready to kick off the deep man is Andrew Bolton for Seattle, standing at a three-yard line. Also back are Lyle Blackwood and Steve Largent, the rookie wide receiver. By the way, Ike Harris is okay. He's standing along the sideline with his helmet now. He hasn't returned to the game, though, since being injured in the first quarter. Here is Falcon's high end-over-end kickoff taken at the 12-yard line by Bolton. Bolton swings it out to the left side, comes to the 30, trips over his own blocker, and then is grabbed right there by the Cardinals at the 25-yard line. It was Wayne Morris who came down and made the stop after Andy Bolton had tripped over his own blocker when he appeared to have some running room out in front of him. So it's first and 10 Seattle at their own 30-yard line. As Jim Zorn and the offensive unit come back in to try and play some catch-up football. Sam McCullum is the wide receiver to the left side. Don Testerman is in the game as a running back. He's number 42 and is in there along with Andy Bolton. Backs are strong left in behind Zorn. Here is an end-around play as they work it to Steve Largent. Largent hit back behind the line of scrimmage back at the 28-yard line as they tried to work the wide receiver around play and it was John Zuck who broke through and broke it up, and there's a loss in the play of about three yards. He tried to fool the old veteran Larry Stallings, and Larry was standing there looking the wide man right in the eye as he came back. Larry didn't make the tackle, but he turned the play back inside in pursuit by John Zook made the play. Second and 12 for Seattle with the ball now at their own 28-yard line. They trail by 20 points in this football game here in the third quarter. Here's Dorn back to throw, looks after him. Pass is knocked down and almost intercepted by Mike Dawson. The rookie as Zuck almost took Zorn's head off. Zorn unloaded and almost threw it right into Dawson's hands. He did, as a matter of fact, but Dawson couldn't hold it. And there's a penalty marker down, and the Seahawks have been called for holding. A third quarter score in that AFC battle between the Steelers and the Raiders at Pittsburgh 14, Oakland 7. A 60-yard run and lateral, Franco Harris to John Stallworth, and the Steelers on top of the Oakland Raiders, 14-7 in the third quarter. Severson and Duran come into the game as the Cardinals go into their 
Cardinals have declined the holding penalty. So it will be a loss of down for the Seahawks. And will be third and 12. Reeves and Hart will come out of there as Duran and Severson go in there. Clune comes out to the right side. McCollum is wide to the left. Third and 12 for Zorn and Seattle at their own 28-yard line. Zorn, the left-handed passer, back to throw, throwing, and it is almost intercepted by Mark Arneson. Arneson had it, went to run, and forgot to bring the football with him, and it's incomplete. As Arneson had the play smelled out and almost had it picked up. And the Seahawks will be forced to punt here on fourth and 12 with the ball at their own 28-yard line. Gary Hammond... Dropping back for the Cardinals. We have 4 of 48 left in the third quarter. Hammond backs up to the Cardinals 31-yard line. And the rookie punter, Rick Ingalls, is in to do the punting. Ingalls, the number three draft choice of Seattle out of Tulsa University. He stands at his own 14-yard line and booms a good one. Hammond has to back up all the way to his own 21. Here's Hammond trying to beat the first man. Bob Newton, a guard, who got down and pounced on Hammond's fumble. And Seattle has a first down at the St. Louis 15. And the big crowd comes to life. It was Dave Brown who made the play. Dave Brown came down on Gary Hammond as Hammond was backing up to receive the kick. He took the kick. Brown came in right on top of him and knocked the ball free. And Bob Newton recovered. So the Seahawks, trailing 23 to 3, have a big opportunity here. First and 10 at the Cardinal 15. McCullum to the left. Largent is wide to the right. Zorn, the quarterback, on the first down play. Gives to Bolton. Bolton going off tackle. Got a couple of yards back. Larry Stallings came over and made the stop along with Ron Yankowski, and Kelsey, and they really would stop right at the line of scrimmage, so there's no gain on the play. With the fumble recovery after the punt, the Seahawks pick up a 55-yard gain down to the Cardinal 15-yard line. McCullum going to the right side. Clune wide to the left. Testerman and Bolton are the setbacks. In behind quarterback Jim Zorn. Second and 15. Zorn back to throw. Chased out of the pocket. Now rolling into the end zone. coming out of the pocket. He rolled left. He could have run, and then he threw into the end zone. Sam McCullum made a one-hand catch along his pant leg and tumbled into the end zone. A sensational catch because Zorn threw the ball too low, but what a great one-handed catch by Sam McCullum backing into the end zone. And the Seahawks have just scored their first touchdown in the NFL. Zorn in the hole for the extra point. Here's Bitterlick, the rookie, booming it up, and it's good. And this brings the crowd of near 65,000 to life here in Seattle as the Cardinals have built up a 23 to 3 lead and now their lead has been cut to 13 points all resulting in a fumble by punt return man Gary Hammond which was recovered and then Zorn on a second down play hitting Sam McCullum the ball as Bill mentioned was thrown low McCullum got one hand on it around the one yard line fell to the goal liner into the end zone and Really had to hold that ball on his hip or on his leg to make sure he held on to it. Zorn is such a great runner. When he spread it out to the left side, the safety on that side came up because he thought Zorn was going to run it in. When he did, Sam McCullum ran right by him, had his face looking right at Zorn. Zorn fired the ball down at his knee, grabbed it with one hand, and finally corralled it in the end zone. Well, the Cardinal lead has been cut to 23 to 10, and the Seahawks have scored their first touchdown. Sam McCullum, the wide receiver, has the distinction of scoring their first touchdown. He's a three-year man out of Montana State. Now, Bitterlick getting ready to kick off to Latin and to Wayne Morris. Long end over end kickoff taken by Morris and fumbled at the five. Now he has it. Morris to the 10 to the 15. Wayne Morris out to the 20 and gets up to about the 28-yard line. 
Cardinals mishandle that kickoff, and Morris had to be quick to recover it, and finally does get it out to the 28-yard line. Jim White, the first man downfield to make the stop, and the Cardinals, with their lead, cut to 13 points, and with 3.33 left here in the third quarter, have a first and 10 situation at their own 28. Jim Hart has had trouble finding Mel Gray open. That's because Ike Harris is not in there to take the other side deep. But I kind of think that Mel Gray is going to show up pretty soon. Kelly is to the left. Mel Gray is to the right. Otis and Metcalf the setback. J.B. Kane the tight end right. Here is Hart back to throw. Completes it down the middle to Chile on a post pattern. Took it at the 40. Gets out to the 44. As Chile ran a short, short post and finally was second by Roley Woolsey. And it is the Cardinal first down. The attendance here today in Seattle, 58,441. The attendance, 58,441. First and 10 Cardinals, the ball at their own 44-yard line. Tilly to the left, Gray wide to the right. Now Tilly switches in as a tight end on the left side. Here's Hart on the first down play to Otis. Otis off tackle. It's hit right at the 45 and thrown back to the 43-yard line. And Steve Niehaus, the number one draft choice from Notre Dame, was there to make the stop on the play. Big number 71. Also in on the play was Richard Harris. And they ruled that Otis had picked up about a yard in the play, so it's second and nine for St. Louis. I still have to feel that they're trying to draw these linebackers in. Mel Gray does not go all ball game without running that deep post or that fly pattern. Mr. Gray's number has to be on the board. And I think it has to be in this series. Gray is to the left, being covered by Roley Woolsey. Kelly to the right, being covered by Eddie McMillan. Second and nine, Cardinal. Here's Hart. Little swing pass out to the right side to Kelly. Gets the block across midfield. Inside the 45, down to the 42-yard line. Ed Bradley, the middle linebacker, and Ken Geddes, the left side linebacker, make the stop as they work a little screen pass out to the right side to the wide receiver, Pat Dilley. He got a couple of blocks and... Goes for a first down at a 12-yard gain to the Seattle 43-yard line. If the Cardinals get desperate enough, the Seattle Seahawks are going to see that flanker pass because they have it on the program, but they won't use it unless it's absolutely necessary. Now Dre is to the left, so is Kelly as he is the slot man out on the left side. First and 10 Cardinals at the Seattle 43. Handoff going to Otis. Otis beats the man at the line of scrimmage inside the 40, down to the 35 to the 34-yard line. And Dave Brown, the free safety, came over to make the stop for Seattle. As Otis is now over the 100-yard mark in rushing. And the Cardinals have another... Well, it's not a first down. They're about a yard short, so it's going to be second and one. Otis has 104 yards unofficially in the ballgame thus far. Second and one, Cardinal. Gray comes out to the right side, being covered by Eddie McMillan. Kelly is the slot man to the right. I formation behind quarterback Jim Hart. On second and one, the handoff going to Metcalf. Metcalf breaks the tackle, breaks it down to the 31-yard line and has a first down for the Cardinals. Dave Brown, the free safety, who has been in on uh, an awful lot of tackles today, along with Al Matthews, the strong safety, made the stop on the play. And Metcalf and the Cardinals have a first down at the Seattle 31-yard line. 33 seconds left here in the third quarter. Cardinals send Gray wide left, Chile the slot left. J.B. Kane, tight end right. Metcalf and Otis are in the backfield behind quarterback Jim Hart. First and 10 at the Seattle 31. Here's Metcalf on a sweep to the right side. Gets the block. Gets inside the 25, down to the 20, and was right behind Conrad Dober all the way downfield as Dave Brown came over and made the stop. And Metcalf has another first down for St. Louis, a 12-yard gain. And that should bring Metcalf to the 100-yard mark for the day on his 12th carry of the football game. These, of course, unofficial statistics at this point. Dobler doing some good lead blocking. Dobler was after Eddie McMillan, and he finally got Eddie and bounced him out of bounds. But it's amazing the speed that Dobler has to turn that corner ahead of Metcalf. First and 10 Cardinals at the Seattle 18. Gray is wide left. Tilly to the right. Now Tilly moves in as a... Tight receiver on the right side. Hand off to Otis. A big hole. He cracks down to the 12-yard line. The hole opens, but closed quickly. And Al Matthews and Dave Brown, the two safeties, came up and made the stop on what was the last play of the third quarter. Cardinals are threatening here. They have a 13-point lead. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. St. Louis 23, Seattle 10.
Everybody else stalking the sidelines, still not smiling. I don't think he likes the way Seattle has shown up here this afternoon. The column is wide to the right side with Steve Largent wide to the left, the rookie. Here's Zorn on the first down play. Takes the draw and is throwing the long bomb for McCollum. He's got it. That time, Jim Zorn faked into the middle of the line to take the pressure off of him, and then it was Norm Thompson isolated on Sam McCullum on a deep post, and did Zorn ever lay that ball right on his fingertips over the outstretched hands of Norm Thompson, 72 yards for Seattle for the score. Now the extra point try by Don Bitterleck, the rookie from Temple. In to hold is Zorn, who threw that long 72-yard touchdown pass. Here is Bitterfield with the Bitterleck with the kick, and it's good. And the Seahawks have pulled it within 13 points of the Cardinals again. They are a testy bunch. There's an official timeout in the score. The Cardinals 30, Seattle 17. Here comes Bitterlick kickoff. Gary Latney comes up, takes it at the 15-yard line. He's to the 20, Latin to the 30. Latin breaks it to the 34-yard line and was cut from behind by number 52, Randy Cofield. As Latin appeared to have some daylight, but Cofield caught him from behind. And the Cardinals have a first down at their own 35-yard line. Jim Zorn has been quite impressive here in his debut as the Seattle Seahawks quarterback today. And, of course, so is the veteran Cardinal signal caller, Jim Hart, who's been on the money. Hart sending out Ray to the right side and Chili the slot man right. First and 10, St. Louis at their own 35-yard line. Hand off to Otis. He ran into his blocker, J.B. Kane, the tight end, and the play goes nowhere. Carl Barisic was there to cover up and make the finishing tackle, but the play was really stopped when Otis ran into the tight end, J.V. Kane. The Cardinal defensive unit has had problems all afternoon because faking that ball, every pass is almost pass play action, which freezes those rushing linemen, and Jim Zorn has made very effective use of that. Gray is wide right against Eddie McMillan. Chile to the left side against Rolly Woolsey. It is second and 10 Cardinals at their own 35 and hardest back to throw. Hart. Throwing, completes it to Gray at the 45. Gray reverses the field over to this side, gets a couple of blocks. Dances down to the 45, to the 40, into the 43. Some nifty running by Mel Gray, and finally brought down by Ken Geddes. And the Cardinals have a first down. I knew sooner or later Mel Gray had to get that football. They've been double covering, but that time Jim Hart faded into the pocket. Good protection, fired an angle of 45 degrees to Mel Gray. He stepped inside a block by Conrad Dobler came all the way to the left sideline, picked up Conrad Dobler once again, picked up Terry Metcalf, tried to get back inside, one block away from going all the way. First and 10 Cardinals at the 38-yard line of Seattle. Both the wide receivers, Gray and Tilly, are to the right. They work Otis on a sweep to the right side, down to the 31-yard line. Goes Jim Otis, tackled by Dave Brown, the free safety, and Eddie McMillan, the left cornerback. And the pickup on the play was about seven. Here's the handoff of the sweep to Metcalf, and he has stopped back at the 32-yard line. Ken Geddes, the left linebacker, broke through. The corner was cut off, and they stopped Metcalf for a little bit of a loss in the play. Time to go back upstairs again, put the ball back in the air, because sooner or later, one of those receivers has to be free. He has not gone to J.B. King. If Mel Gray can clear out one side, drag in King right under him, then one of the two should be open. Third and four, Cardinals. Gray has caught... A big pass on this drive at third and four Cardinals at the 32-yard line. Gray to the left. Kelly is to the right. Hard as back to throw. Under some pressure. Ducks under, and they have him sacked. Steve Niehaus, the number one draft choice from Notre Dame, sacks the Cardinal quarterback Jim Hart for a loss of four yards back to the 35-yard line. And that is something that many teams don't do to the Cardinal quarterback. Teams only did it eight times all year last year as they led the National Football League in no sacks. And Dallas played nine quarters of football against the Cardinals and never got Jim Hart once. 
But that time, Jim took about eight or nine seconds because nobody was open. The Seattle Seahawks, again, covered very well as they're going to forego the field goal. Jerry Joyce in to do the punting for the Cardinals. Stands at midfield. Will try and probably angle it out of bounds. Tries to kick it to the far sideline. Bounces and goes into the end zone. Oh, they rule it went out about the three-yard line. And if the fans argue about that or boo about it, I'm not really surprised. I thought it had gone into the end zone, Bill. No, I'll tell you why. The ball is marked where it sails over the outbound line. Now, while it bounced in the end zone, it sailed out of bounds on the three-yard line. The official was correct in that call. It's not where the ball hit. It's where the ball goes out of bounds on the fly. That was a correct marking by the official. We have 10 minutes and 27 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Cardinal 30, Seattle 17, and Jerry Joyce potted for the Cardinals, and they roll the ball went out of bounds at the three-yard line, and that's where Seattle will have to put it into play. I'll have to agree with you, Dan. I, too, thought it had gone out of bounds. So did Jerry Joyce, because as he stood back there alone watching the fight of that ball, he shook his head. I don't see how the ball could have gone out on the three because it never hit the ground until it hit in the end zone. And in order for that ball to have gone out on the three-yard line, it would have had to have changed direction in flight. And that's impossible. That was not a curve. Maybe he kicked the slider. <laughs> Maybe so, but you could have fooled me. Well, the fans here in Seattle didn't think that the ball had gone out of bounds at the three-yard line, but the man or the men who have the final word did. Zorn and the offense take over at their own three, and this crowd is solidly behind this young Seattle expansion team, and Zorn is back into the end zone to throw. Throwing down the middle and incomplete, intended for Steve Largent, out around the 40-yard line. Thompson and Sensabaugh were both in the area covering. So Zorn dropped back into the end zone and went for a long pass to the rookie wide receiver, Steve Largent. Into the game now is Ralph Nelson. Now, if Zorn... Along with Don... Go ahead. Don Testament is the other running back. If Zorn goes deep now, the Cardinals have an excellent chance of picking it off because he's backing into the end zone and doesn't have that much time to look around. Largent wide to the right. McCullum wide to the left. Here's Zorn rolling back into the end zone. Rolls to his left. Completes the pass out of the 15-yard line. To Ron Howard, the tight end. Howard tackled by Ken Reeves but got it to the 15-yard line and... Seattle has the first down, and Jim Zorn continues to be very impressive. He is really baffling the Cardinal defense because when he rolled that time, the defensive end was caught inside, and the tight end coming across laterally was in position to pick it off. First and 10, Seattle at their own 15. Large and wide right, McCullum to the left side, and Zorn again back to throw. Throwing to Large and completed the 23, up to the 25, to the 27. And another first down as he stepped out of bounds when bumped by Norm Thompson. And Jim Zorn, the young rookie quarterback, has this crowd excited here at the Kingdom in Seattle. Well, John Zook has not been in on the pass for all evening long. The Cardinals are stunning all over the place, trying to find the right combination. But I think Charlie Davis is going to go back in soon. They have Mike Dawson and Upshaw in. There's been not enough pressure in the middle of that pocket. And you've got to force him out, and that end has to play wide, or he's going to do what he's been doing so far, and that's put 17 points on the board. First and 10, Seattle at their own 27-yard line. Here's Zorn again back to throw. He's hit on two in a row. A left-handed throw, throwing long. The Cardinals were not close enough on him, and he caught that ball right on his fingertip while he was diving. A sensational catch by Steve Larson. Lauren is now hit on three passes in a row. That one, a circus catch by Steve Larson. Recently obtained by Seattle from Houston. Now Steve Rabel, a wide receiver into the game. Zorn back to throw again. Zorn under pressure, throws, and this one's incomplete as he was hit. 
just as he threw, Charlie Davis. Charlie Davis was the man who made the hit, and Zorn was off balance when he threw the football. Zorn has really been impressive here. He's 6'2", 200 pounder, a left-handed quarterback who was waived by Dallas just two days before the season opener last year to make room for Preston Pearson. Originally signed by the Cowboys as a free agent, he earned Little All-America, Little All-Coast, and was Southern California College Division Player of the Year in 1973 at Cal Poly. As Zorn and Seattle come out second and ten at the Cardinal 33-yard line. Zorn back to throw under pressure, and he's back back there. Charlie Davis and John Zook in on the hit for the Cardinals, and they finally get to Zorn. As I said before, the pressure has to come from the two tackles to force him out of that pocket. And when Charlie Davis wants to get to that passer, there is nobody in the National Football League who can keep him out. The rap on Charlie is that he does not go full out on every play. When Willie Zappalike sent him in there, he said, get the passer, and that is precisely what Charlie Davis has done. The secondary has looked bad because Zorn has had too much time, but Charlie Davis has fired up, and Zorn doesn't have that time now. A loss of nine. It's third and 19. Seahawks have four wide receivers in the game at this point. Third and 19. Zorn back to throw. Gets away from the rush. Takes off down the far sideline and gets back to the 35-yard line before Severson chased him out of bounds. See where they rule that he did step out. It was around the 35. It's going to be marked about the 33-yard line. And that's going to leave them still about nine yards short in a fourth down play coming up. 8-10 left of the football game. And they're going to go for it. Steve Larson is in there. Steve Rabel is in there. Ron Howard is in there. As they go with plenty of wide receivers in this situation. Fourth and ten, the Seahawks and McCullum to the left. They have flown out to the right. Wide receivers all over the place. Fourth and ten, Zorn back to throw. Completes it to Howard. A tight end, and he'll be close to the first down. Tackled immediately on the play. But let's see whether they have the first down or not. As he hits the tight end, Ron Howard down at the Cardinals' 23-yard line. From right here, it looks short. Because they stopped him, he could not get any forward progress. Meanwhile, Ron Yankowski limping out of the ball game. I think he's short. But well, let's see. He is short. He's short. Cardinal ball, first and ten on the 24-yard line. That offensive unit of the Seahawks gets quite an applause as they head for the Seattle bench. They wound up about a half yard short of the first down on a fourth down gamble. And the Cardinals, with 7.57 left in the game, Take over first and ten. The Cardinals lead 30 to 17. Give your thanks to Charlie Davis. He's the man who turned this ball game around. Now Gray and Chile go wide to the right side. Jim Hart and the Cardinals, who have had their hands full here today, take over offensively. Handoff going to Otis. Penalty marker down as Otis gets out to the 28-yard line. It appeared like someone on the right side of the Cardinal line may have jumped the gun. I can't believe this score is 30 to 17 because the way the Seattle Haw Seahawks have played here this afternoon, you think this ball game was a lot closer than that. It doesn't matter what the final score here is this afternoon. The Seattle Seahawks have certainly acquitted themselves well. Jim Zorn has been outstanding. And I'll tell you, if I were the coach of an opposing team, every pass play I would run would be off pass play action because the Cardinals have had a bundle of trouble here trying to defend against it. Dan Deardorff was the man who was called with the illegal motion. So it's going to be first and 15 for the Cardinals. Back at the Cardinal 18-yard line. Tom Banks over the ball at center. Gray is wide right. Kelly to the left side. Metcalf and Otis to the running back. First and 15, St. Louis, as the Cardinals switch into an eye formation now. Here is Hart. Works the draw play to Metcalf. Metcalf up to the 20 to the 21-yard line. And it stopped there by Ed Bradley, the middle linebacker. As Metcalf picks up about three yards in the play, so it's going to be second and 12 for St. Louis. At the 21-yard line, 7.33 left in the fourth quarter. Cardinals lead by 13, 30-17. Thirty Gray to the right side. Pat Tilly wide left. Metcalf. Was a wing, now switches back. The backs are strong left behind Hart. Third and 12, Hart back to throw. 
screen pass to Jones. Jones breaks the tackle at the 20, up to the 24-yard line. And it's brought down there by Al Matthews, the strong safety. And the Cardinals are going to come up with about nine yards to go. So it's going to be third and nine for St. Louis. In the fourth quarter, Pittsburgh leads Oakland by a score of 21-14, but never mind that. The Cardinals have their hands full here, leading 30-17, 6.45 on the clock. Third down and nine. They have to make a first down here. 6.40 left in the fourth quarter. Raised to the left. So is Chile. He's in the slot. Third and nine, St. Louis at their own 23 as Hart drops back to throw. Hart looking downfield. It is intercepted. And the Seahawks have a first down at the Cardinal 25 after the interception by Roley Woolsey. That pass was intended for Mel Gray. Apparently it was tipped on the way by Mike Curtis. And that may have led to the interception by Woolsey. What was that penalty marker about, Bill? I didn't see an indication. But whatever it was, it was against the Cardinals. It was a personal foul. I saw Conrad Dobler tangling with one of the Seahawks. That might have been it. It was a stripping penalty assessed against Conrad Dobler. The Seahawks declined the penalty and have a first down after the interception by the cornerback, Roley Woolsey, at the Cardinal 27-yard line. 6.22 remaining. Cardinals lead by 13. Charlie Davis was the man of the hour in the last defensive series. He'll have to be the man of the hour again because he has to collapse that pocket on Jim Zorn. Zuck, Upshaw, Davis, and Yankowski, the front four. Here's Zorn on the first down play at the Cardinal 27, and he's sacked by Yankowski back at the 39-yard line. Penalty marker down. Yankowski came in from the blind side. Big loss on the play, but a penalty marker was thrown. And it appears to be against the Cardinals. It appears to be against Greg Hartle for holding. We'll get the official call. That is the call. So the Seahawks, after a key defensive play by Yankelski, which is nullified by a defensive holding penalty, moves the ball down to the 22-yard line, and it will be first and five for Seattle. Penalty. 6-17 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Cardinals' lead has been cut to 13, and the Seahawks are threatening. They have first and 10 at the 22-yard line. I thought it would be first and five. Here it is, first and 10 at the 22, and Zorn is back to throw. Rolls out to his left, throwing. Completes it at the 8-yard line. No, it is incomplete. The receiver... Marched it, but up, has the ball, but when he was hit by Worley at the sideline, he coughed it up. And a good hit by Worley to shake the ball loose from the rookie wide receiver, Steve Largent. Time and time again, when the Cardinals have had the ball game on the line, number 22, Roger Worley, he came up and put a shot around the right arm of the wide receiver and knocked the ball free. Don Testerman leaves the game. Ralph Nelson comes in as a running back. I can't remember the last time they used a running back, though. Zorn has been constantly throwing the football. As Largent wide to the left. Sam McCullum to the right. Second and 10, Seattle at the Cardinal 22. Zorn back to throw. Down the middle and intended for the running back, Andy Bolton, but it was underthrown and incomplete. And it will be third and 10 for Seattle. Now it's 6 3 and every time you have an incompleted pass, that clock stops. It seems we've been around the six and seven minute mark left in the fourth quarter for the last 10 minutes. We certainly have. Ron Yankowski and Charlie Davis put the pressure on Zorn that time. And now the Cardinals are getting the pressure they didn't get earlier in the ball game. And you can see the results with the incompleted passes and the drop passes. Cardinals bring in two extra defensive backs. Third and ten. Here's Zorn back to throw, throwing down the middle, and it is incomplete. Poon had it in his hands at the three-yard line. It was hit by Jason Duran and coughed it up. Sensibly in the area as well. 
and Kloon had what appeared to be a first down and perhaps a touchdown at the three-yard line. He should have caught it, no question about it. John, uh, rather the quarterback, Jim Zorn, put that ball right on the money. The Cardinals' deep five dropped back, but he came right between the zone. He had the ball in his hands. He should have caught it. The only thing that would have prevented him from catching it would have been a hard hit by Jason Duran. And at the two-yard line, what does it matter the way Zorn is throwing? So it's going to be fourth and ten, and the Seahawks are going for it. They have four wide receivers in the game, along with quarterback Jim Zorn. Fourth and ten at the Cardinal 22 with six minutes remaining. Zorn back to throw. Completes it down to the eight-yard line to Ron Howard, the tight end. And the Seahawks have a first down. Mike Sensabaugh made the tackle on Ron Howard. And they mark it inside the eight, so it will be first and goal for Seattle. Well, again, no pressure on Zorn. He simply waited for the tight end to go down about 10 yards and peeled back into the middle, and he threw the ball right between the defense. And again, the front four, no pressure. That's been the problem all afternoon as Willie Zappel, like clapping his hands on the sideline, out to the defensive line to put it on the line now. McCollum to the left. Largent is to the right. First and goal, Seattle at the Cardinal. Eight, Doran rolls out to the right side. Going around at the five. Down in the end zone. Touchdown! Jim Doran. An eight-yard rollout. Was hit by Ken Reeves, but fell into the end zone. of passing these Seahawks have put on here this evening. Jim Zorn outran the coverage on the left side and got banged at the goal line, but he went in for the touchdown. Zorn to hold. Don Bitterlich to try for the extra point. The margin is seven now. Bitterlich puts it up, and it is good. And Bitterlich makes things even more interesting for these Seattle fans and a little more testy for Cardinal fans. A six-point margin with 5.03 remaining. There's an official timeout on the score. The Cardinal 30, Seattle 24. What's in the lineup for this fall? Chevrolet, bringing you Cardinal football and quality cars. The spotlight this season is on the first string line of compact cars, Chevette, Vega, and Monza. With one of these new Chevys, you can keep the scrimmage on the football field. No more defense on the parking lot. And you can park in spaces average cars pass by. Yet still be comfortable driving to and from the stadium. And there's plenty of room for you and your family and the Cardinal pennants, too. You know, you can always count on Chevrolet. And this team of compact Chevys will keep you cheering its performance. Test drive a Chevette, Vega, or Monza. It'll win your approval. See your Chevrolet dealers today and get in on the best lineup this season. Francis Chevrolet Company, 11,200 St. Charles Rock Road, Bridgeton, Missouri. Charlie Chevrolet Incorporated at 3721 South Grand Boulevard, St. Louis, Missouri. And Schmidt Chevrolet Incorporated, 512, 518 West Main, Belleville, Illinois. Dan Kelly with Bill Wilkerson back in Seattle, Washington. 503 left in the fourth quarter. Cardinal fleet by six points as Don Bitterlich is ready to kick off. Jerry Latin is the only deep man for the Cardinals. Bitterlich booms it down to Latin who takes it at the nine. He's to the 15 to the 20. Latin tries to cut to the outside, brought down at the 23-yard line. And the man downfield is Don Dufek to make the stop on Jerry Latin. As the Cardinals, with less than five minutes to play, have the football and have only a six-point lead on the Seattle Seahawks. The big question of the afternoon has just come up, and we know the answer. Will you put Terry Metcalf in on the kick returns when you need him? You can't tell me they don't need him right now, and he wasn't in there. And it is the first down for the Cardinals at the 24-yard line. Gray to the left. Kelly goes to the right. Baxter split in behind. Quarterback Jim Hart. Cardinals with only a six-point lead in the kingdom in Seattle. Here is the handoff going to Otis. Otis powers his way off tackle off to the 31-yard line before Steve Niehaus drifted back along with Don Hanson, the middle linebacker, to make the stop. And the pickup on the play was about seven. It will be second and three for the Cardinals, who will try and eat up the clock here and move the football at the same time. 
Seattle has two timeouts remaining. The Cardinals have all three of theirs. Four and a half minutes left. Kelly wide right, Gray to the left. High formation in behind Jim Hart on third and three. Here's the handoff to Metcalf, who gets out to the 34-yard line and appears to have the first down for St. Louis. Hanson, the middle linebacker. And Errol Barrett, the right tackle, makes the stop. And it is a Cardinal first down. I'll tell you, time and time again, this great offensive line has saved the day for St. Louis. They had to make a first down, and they did. You don't want to put the ball up unless you're trying to surprise somebody, and the offensive line has to do the job right now. First and 10 Cardinals at their own 34. Gray wide left, Kelly in the slot to the left side. Here's Hart handing off to Otis, who goes off tackle. Tipped up at the line of scrimmage, but falls to the 37-yard line, and it was Jim White from his defensive end post who came over to make the stop. And the game was about three on the play, and it will be second and seven for St. Louis. Now with 327 remaining in the fourth quarter. If the teams were tied after regulation time, they would play sudden death overtime. Here's Gray, wide right. Otis has now gained 131 yards unofficially on 25 carries. Second and seven, Cardinals at their own 36. Hand off to Otis, the sweep to the right side. Gets across the 40, out to the 43-yard line. Stopped short of the first down by Mike Curtis, the right side linebacker, and Dave Brown coming up from free safety. Pickup was five, and it's going to be third and two for St. Louis. With the ball now out of the Cardinal 43-yard line. Clock running, 2.45 remaining in the fourth quarter. Here comes Steve Jones into the game. Out of the game comes Jim Otis. Third and two, St. Louis. At the Cardinal 43-yard line. Jim Hart working on a long count. Turns, hands to Steve Jones. Jones breaks the tackle, breaks the way across midfield. Down to the Seattle 45-yard line and has a first down as Jones picks up about 10 yards in the play and almost broke the play. Eddie McMillan and Jim White made the stop and the Cardinals have a first down at the Seattle 47 and the Seahawks have called a timeout with 2.12 remaining here in the fourth quarter. You talk about a great offensive line. At the line of scrimmage, it looked as if somebody dropped a bomb in the middle of the kingdom. There were bodies piled everywhere and the runner, Steve Jones, is moving down the field. The front three for Seattle didn't get off the line of scrimmage as Conrad Dobler, Tom Banks, Dan Deardorff, Bob Young, and Roger Finney did a tremendous job of firing off that ball, and all they have to do is fire out and create just a small alley. That's what they did, and Steve Jones came within an eyelash of breaking that all the way. A great job by the Cardinal offensive line. They have had to do the work tonight because the defensive line has not. Well, the folks who have attended the first National Football League regular season game ever in Seattle, 58,441 have certainly enjoyed themselves here today. Hope you've enjoyed the broadcast back along the Cardinal Network. 30 to 24 of the Cardinals lead, a margin of six points. And Bill, at one time in this uh, second half, they had a 30 to 13 lead. I'll tell you, I didn't expect the Seahawks to come up with this kind of football game, and neither did the Cardinals. But Jim Zorn has just been magnificent. And while I've been talking about the defensive line not doing the job, don't let me overlook the fact that perhaps the offensive line for Seattle has been doing the job, because whatever the case may be, they have held the Cardinals out repeatedly. Charlie Davis came in on one series for a key sack and a key pressure on Zorn, but now the Cardinals not only have to keep this ball, they need at least three points on this drive. Tom Brahaney comes into the game, reports in as the tight end as Kelly comes out. First and 10, St. Louis at the 47-yard line. Jones and Otis are in the backfield. Cardinals with 2.12 remaining, trying to move the football and stay on the ground. The handoff goes to Otis, off tackle. Otis gets to the 45, falls to the 44-yard line. Picks up about three yards to Steve Niehaus. Made the tackle on the play, and Niehaus says, done very well in his opening game in professional football in regular season play and we get the two minute warning from the field as Jim Hart comes to the Cardinal bench Cardinals leading 30 to 24 Otis picked up two yards in the play so it's going to be second and eight for St. Louis at the Seattle 44 yard line 
I like a good football game as well as the next fan, but I could have done without all this excitement here this afternoon because the Cardinals, for oh, any realistic football fan, would have had to expect the Cardinals to simply roll over the Seattle Seahawks. Maybe it was the crowd here, a crowd of over 50,000. Maybe that was it. Maybe it was the fact that the Cardinals took the Seahawks too lightly. Who can tell? Whatever it was, the Seahawks have given the Cardinals one heck of a battle in their first professional game as a National Football League franchise in the regular season. With two minutes to go, the score is 30-24, and there have been some fireworks here this afternoon. I know I really didn't expect this, Bill, did you? Heck no, I didn't expect it, and I'm sure that Don Coryell didn't expect it. You always worry about such a situation as this because uh, the Seahawks, you could imagine, their first game uh, playing before the home folks, you could imagine they would be sky high, and you just hope that the team that's favored in this play, in this uh, opportunity, the Cardinals.